Knott's Rockcast is an association with Regular Riot. Welcome to Knott's Rockcast, the Knott's Alternative Scene Podcast. Here is your host, Jeff O'D, bringing you everything knots and rocks. And welcome back again to Knots Rockcast over YouTube. This is NRC056 with Chaos Bleak. This is definitely one of them goth post-punk bands, one to watch. So, as always, I just have to remind you, please hit the subscribe button and ding that bell to be notified of any upcoming podcasts put on the YouTube channel. Let's get to the chat. Right, okay, we'll get started. Welcome here today. We're in the A Ye old Salutation in the Cromwell Snug, and I'm with Chaos Bleak. And two uh, members of. Two members two of, of Trevor and Pierce. So Indeed. would you like to tell us what you do and introduce yourselves? You first, Pierce. Okay, so I'm Pierce. I'm the singer. Uh, so I do all the vocals, obviously. Uh, I write the lyrics. I do the design. I organise gigs. All the interesting stuff and the... Uh, and the boring stuff. He's the front well, man. I'm the front man. You're the, the, front. You're the, ad, you're the admin. I'm ad, well. admin and front man. Yeah. yeah. Lift, lifting microphones that's, and papers. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I kind of, my name's Trev or Trevor. I don't really mind which, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, my main instrument is the guitar. Um, but all the backing tracks I write and compose and all the recordings I do in my studio, all the production, all the engineering, mastering, all the money. Wow. Yeah, all of it. Cool. Apart from the only bit I don't do is is lead vocals and just in the bass player's peak parts. Yeah, he constructs those. So effectively, I write. Um, I come up with a guitar line, and then I program the drums, program the sequences, uh, strings, and then what I do is because I've got me in Pro Tools Studio in my house. Yes, uh, I was going to ask which door. Yeah, Pro Tools. Pro yeah. Tools. Oh, Pro Tools all the way, mate. Forget about anything else. It's Pro Tools. I've just uh, moved on to Studio One. I don't know that one. It's just logic, is, logic is what everybody goes on about, but I've never really got onto Logic. I, I, prefer, I, never, like, I never got onto Logic. Logic, I think, that it is good, uh, but I don't think you can drill down far enough in regards um, the actual EQ. If you, yeah. if you basically really want to ma manipulate sound, I think you can't really drill down far enough with Logic, whereas or maybe that's because I don't know Logic well enough, but whenever I've used it, I just go, I can't get the guitar sound, I really cannot get it right. Yeah. Whereas yeah. with Pro Tools, I, I've got, I, you can drill right down yeah. to, to like yeah. the tiniest little bit. And also I think the EQ sort of, um, sort of plugins on Pro Tools for me are far superior. And I think Pro Tools is, is that actually- stock plugins? Yeah, and yeah. also the, also, the stock plugins are pretty good, but obviously, if you're using this sort of like the the, the mastering software which I've got, yeah, you can get right in there. And I, prefer, I mean, the stock plugins are pretty damn good. Yeah, um, don't get me wrong. And I use them for recording, but I use a different Pro Tools rig for mastering. Um, use older. Oh right, a sort of software for that. Uh, what do I? What's it called now? I always forget. Waves. That's yes. what I use. It's quite old now, but I actually really like it. And I've actually over the over the years, I've actually come up with. Uh, a template or a series of templates that just work for everything. Oh, so and I do adjust them over time. Yeah, I do. I do mess around with it a little. Bit. Yeah. So I've got like um, one rig for, for Pro Tools for recording, and I've got another rig Pro Tools for mastering. Yeah. So yeah. So anyway, so um, I kind of everything's recorded, mixed and mastered by me. Oh. And how we actually write is probably what you want to know. How we do. Yeah. Is, um, is, uh, is I will well, have an you idea. Tell me what the band's what the band is. Is what genre and. I always find that a really sort of a, a very, very difficult question to, uh, to answer because, um, you know, obviously the, the, the culture that we're from is actually the post-punk Gothic underground. Yeah. You know, it's specifically um, the, uh, the, the the culture that evolved in the 90s, you know, yeah. and that's really where our roots are. However, our, you know, other people may see other things that we may not see. Yeah. We're very cognizant of the fact that our well, main influences are Killing Joke and Play Dead. Yeah. Uh, but however, I think that if you were to listen to our music, you'd probably pick a load of other things up. That we probably, I mean, I'm into space rock big time. Yeah. You know, Hawkwind, early Hawkwind. 
Yeah, early Hawkwind. Nothing. I like Hawkwind. Hawkwind's good. Oh, <laughs> nothing, uh, basically anything before oh, Hugh Lloyd Langton. Mm. Sorry? I was about to say, I never Any, used to know Huey, but... I'm not really a fan of his that. guitar playing, but yeah. I do respect him as a musician. Mm. Um, but for me, Hawkwind, it, it's prime prior that time yeah. specifically when Lemmy was in the band yeah so that says a big influence and, and obviously Justin's got his own set of influences he's not here to say what they are yeah J Justin, um, Justin's in um Crimson Brigade, Brigade, who are a black metal band. Oh, right. Yeah, he's, he's so you'll know him from that. Uh, as well as ha um, having been in and still is in 13 Candles. Like yeah, classic, one of, one classic, classic gothic classic band. Gothic band. So of the 90s, totally, yeah. We, we've been described as um, very, varyingly as proto goth, goth. Post punk, to post punk. We 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 depends on what yeah, what you see. And I think I think it's down to the listener to decide. I mean, I think that with us, I think that even though we think we're that, I think there's a really really strong '90s element. I think that obviously comes from my production yeah. and yeah. and, and uh, sequencing and yeah. everything. Um, but you know, I think that it, other people may see or hear different things. So I think that really. Again, it's up to interpretation. Yeah. I think that mm. the two strongest influences that we all share, and we're quite uh, clear about this, is Play Dead and Killing Joke. Yeah. And we want to kind of bring that kind of particular um, style of composition and musicality back. Because yeah. there's nobody else doing what we do at all. There is nobody else. There right. is, apart from Killing Joke, when they, when they do stuff. There is nobody else that does the sort of stuff that we do. I will say, I haven't researched your band. Does okay. it listen to the music yet? Yes. That's all right. When, right. when I... When I get a band contact me that I, or someone I don't know, I tend not to do any major research nice and just go for the spontaneity. There's no yeah, wrong with that. Absolutely. That's yeah, completely yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah, that's all good. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I'm very intrigued, especially as yourself working as a composer with your music mm. as oh, yeah. well as just... Well, not just, but as well as a musician. It's very well, Chaos Freak is, is the main project I've got. And Piers and I used to be in another band called Arcane Winter. Oh, wearing a t-shirt yeah. today. <laughs> uh, we used to be, a, but that was more of a traditional post-punk band with a real yeah. drummer yeah. and everything else. Um, and we were in that band together for a couple of, couple of years, was it? A couple of years? About five years. So it, we, we had a long, basically for various reasons, people left and or had reasons they couldn't continue. Yeah. So we, we were on hiatus was the American term, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. For a long period of time. We're, we're, like, we're on pause. We're on pause. We wanted to get back to it, but we were waiting and waiting and waiting. And about a year ago, actually, almost a year ago, Ooh, yeah. we had a meeting in a pub in, in Hucknall said, are we going to reactivate uh, Arcane Winter, but differently? Yeah. Or are we going to go for a completely new musical project? And I'm we decided to fly, sorry. I know, it's all right. <laughs> um, we, um, we decided to do a completely new musical project because I wanted to involve more sequences and sampled material yeah which we couldn't involve with with arcane winter because of the, having to use rock, live drums and real drums yeah because it's just you can do it which is a logistical nightmare they, they don't sit together well and so we wanted to i wanted to bring that back into it uh plus from a production point of view I was never. I'd, I think. I think basically, what it comes down to, I'm not very good at recording drums. I've okay. tried my best, yeah. uh, but I'm much more, I'm much happier working with a drum machine because immediately you can get the sound that you want. Yeah. And over the, over years, and in, and in other musical projects, um, I've learned how to get the best out of the drum machine. Yeah. And um, I mean, also in two other projects. Well, one of which is on pause, Death Party UK, yeah. which is sort of post punk rock and rock and roll rockabilly. And then there's, a, then there's a, a project which is only a studio project and never play live called the Angel Fire Project, which is prog goth. Oh, Each right. song clocks in at seven to eight minutes. So nice. it's, you know, with lots and lots of guitar Weird solos, like which we don't do with Chaos Speak <laughs> at all. Completely different thing. And I like yeah. the idea that you can, with, with the, one of the things that technology can do is it can free you to, to pursue different things. Yeah. Whereas once upon a time you couldn't do that. And that's one thing. But obviously Chaos Speak is the main thing now. Yeah. And, uh, Death Party's on pause. For various reasons, and uh, Angel Fire is only ever going to be a occasional, once in a while, side project. Yeah, it's probably more than what you expected. That, that's <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah. Question one A. So, Piers, what type of microphone do you use? <laughs> Using the house one. <laughs> Why didn't you get your hands on an SM58? Usually, <laughs> in the studio we use a Rode. For oh, you use Rode. Yeah. For, I know. I know a lot of people are funny about Rhodes, but oh, I actually right. get on with them quite well. Yeah. I mean, some people say, "Oh, I hate it, Mike," but I actually get on with Rhodes, and I well, again, over the years, I've learned how to use it. Yeah. You know. So. Well, the 
guy who introduces the podcast on the intro part, yeah. Lewis Phyllis, he's got a road yeah. NT, I think it's an NT1A. Yeah, but I can he's never changed, remember. Changed he's, changed was... out, he's changed out the capsule on it because he said the best thing was about it that he could mod the capsule and yeah. it sounded exactly the way he wanted. I, I like him. You know, I like his I like voice at the beginning of the yeah. podcast. It really works. Yeah. I think it's all good. Uh, oh, question. <laughs> I think question I th- one, eight, one, eight, one B. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pers- personally, I'm I'm slowly building up a mic locker, but mm. I'm I'm buying kind of I'm doing kind of what Lewis is doing is buying microphones and changing them out, swapping them out. Because as much as I'd have loved to have had, what have I got? Six. SM57 replicas. Mm, yeah. I'd love to have the short ones, course, but yeah. the price tag on it, yeah. when I bought the second, the kind of cheaper ones, mm. and then bought the Transformers, was like, just sounds the same. Because I, mean, I managed the to the buy day, one and compare it. That's it, though. At the end of the day, is is that uh, you pay a lot for a make, and it's yeah. not, always, not always right. No. I mean, I think what it comes down to, I mean, I'm, so with guitars, I mean, I've got some, actually I've sold one, I've got 12, 19 guitars. Wow, well, um, you beat me. Yeah. <laughs> Only uh, 14. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> uh, and over the years, it's I've like, got four. I've, I've got, four, you've got four? I've seen two of them. <laughs> um, but over the years, I've experimented with different kinds of guitars. Yeah. And I also teach guitar as well. So, oh, cool. And so, uh, you know, I've experimented with different guitars over the years. Where do they get in contact with you? if they want to get lessons yeah well, uh, uh, well what's my email what's my website T- I think it's something really pretty about like something like tbamfordguitartutor.com cool <laughs> I don't think it's like, quite I mean it's basically anybody who wants lessons contact me uh, and then obviously I'll try and book you in I'll try and remember, well when I T-Bamford, when I go to editing I'll get T- you tbamfordguitartutor.com <laughs> nice and easy one to remember I don't I don't I don't, I don't uh, have any don't follow any syllabus I don't follow any um I just basically teach what people need to learn. Yeah, because I'm self-taught. I've got. I've never had a music uh, guitar lesson in my life. Exactly completely like self, me then. Completely self-taught. Loads of bad habits, but I don't care because I it's, I get what I want, and that's the whole idea. Is that when I'm teaching guitar, it's about the person's personal journey. Yeah, you know, and that's how I go there's, with. There's it. a danger, isn't there, that you you have lessons and it irons the flare out. Yeah, yeah, and 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 then you sound like the next person. Yeah, and I, and I think that's that's a great shame, and I think. Particularly in the sort of alternative scene, I think having your own sound I is, think it's is, is what we need. Yeah, you know, if you want to play five open strings, then you play five open strings. Yeah, it doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> I do all sorts because it's completely bad, you know. But um, so yeah, so go about guitars. Is over the years, I experiment with different guitars. Yeah, and I always come back to one type. I've got how many? I've got three or four of the same one type. It was what people refer to as a super strap. Oh, I mean, yes. I've got, you know, uh, my main guitar for standard tuning is my Charvel, vintage 80 Charvel, which I bought in the 80s, yeah. which I've still got and still use and I've used since cool. then. And I've got like, um, basically like a, a copy of that, uh, what is it, uh, vintage guitars, which I think is JSH under another name. And it, it's as odd as that sounds, it's actually quite a good guitar, cheap, yeah. but I, I I think that sometimes you say about, you know, sometimes about you can spend a load of money uh, on a guitar and it won't sound any better than one you, the, that's, you know, like a, <clears throat> a copy or a, you know, yeah. a modded. You have to mod them. You always have to mod them. Oh, yeah. Um, but it's like, so So basically I've come back to the super strats, even though, you know, I do like, I do like Floyd Rose tram systems and or stylies. Yeah. But I know that they have their own problems. Yeah. But I always come back. I always come back. No matter what style of music I'm playing, I always come back to them. Yeah. I've tried... I try to like single coil guitars. I just I try, and I can see that certain styles of music. And when if I'm playing certain stuff, you know, for for other people and whatever, a single coil. And I've got a, a really nice, um, simple um, t- uh, Telecaster. Yeah, and it's good for what it is, but it won't do what I want it to do for 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 the uh, for basically uh, Chaos Bleak or any any of the projects we find. So yeah, I always come back to yeah. them. And I can say I've got a couple of. Um, you know, sort of, well, the, the the guitar I've got in D standard, that, I mean, I paid £55 for that. Oh, cool. And it does, it does the job, doesn't it? You wouldn't yeah. think it. No. I mean, it, I mean it, has, it, does, it just needs fixing up. It's been knocked around a little bit. <laughs> well, I mean, you know. I understand that one, like, amazingly. Yeah. Like, I've said it before on this podcast, is I, 
saw a friend in secondary school have this guitar and I wanted it. It was a super strat, uh -huh. Washburn G8, GV8, yeah. 8V, I can't remember which way around it is. Has he got the drop shot fin thing? Yeah. All, my, all of mine have got yeah. that, it's reversed. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it cost me 50 quid at the time. Yeah. It's been used, the trim's broke, well, part of the trim's broken on it, yeah. but I still love it, still love playing it, still a lovely guitar. Yeah. And I did the most stupidest thing the other day, went on eBay because I was like, oh, I wonder how much my keyboard was. Turns out this keyboard that I got for like 20, 50 quid is now worth 600. Wow. And wow. my guitar, this Washburn, they're going for about 400 quid. Wow. And because oh. everybody now wants vintage yeah. you sold it didn't you instruments no I haven't no. good <laughs> no, no, say no. good <laughs> no I've got this Roland JV35 yeah wow. and it's lovely it's lovely yeah. for the fact I can use it as a MIDI controller yeah. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've got a cheap MIDI controller right so in front I use of a my cheap, I use a cheap MIDI controller that's it but I can use the keyboard the Roland yeah. for a proper big yeah, yeah. controller yeah, it's and it's got good. full weighted keys and it's oh, lovely. It looks nice too. And the sounds are really yeah. good. And it's got the ex it came with the expansion pack as well. So it's I was really just good. like, wow, wow. But I didn't Bobby. realize that. Because I realized obviously tape machines, yeah. your Porter Studios after um, Corvini off um, Nine Inch Nails yeah. said, you know, this is what I do. I record four tracks and yeah. I play a Porter Studio yeah. live on stage. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I can't buy a Porter Studio now. Cause <laughs> Thanks a lot, mate. I can't buy a tape player. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, well, you know, I'll sit yeah. with the instruments I got. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, I completely understand this. Mm. It really isn't the price tag at the time. It's what it's worth. To you, yeah, totally agree. I mean, I've, yeah. I've got one of my favourite guitars for Death Party UK. Yeah, is um, is a, a Yamaha Pacifica. Yeah, which I bought for sixty pounds. Oh, cool! And it, it, it's just got that sound. It's and a I've, guitar. It's got. It's just. It's nice. Isn't it? I had to use it uh, at a Chaos Big gig the other day because it was a technical problem. Because it's my backup in, yeah. in, D, in, in E standard, and I put it on, and it was like we never actually played the songs. The Kev Big songs on that guitar, and it was like putting on somebody else's underpants. It felt really weird, yeah. uh, you know. But no, I, I'm kind of, you know, you know, sort of, um, yeah. I mean, uh, that only cost me sixty pounds, but I really rate it. Yeah, this is cheap guitar. Yeah, it just, it's it's nice. Mm. Some cheap guitars aren't nice, but that's a nice one. So yeah, just, this is where I'm dying to get my Casio MIDI guitar re repacked yeah. because it doesn't work. Yeah, but yeah I, know I what think you mean. for what you know, the style of music and yeah. stuff that I'm trying to go with, yeah. I'd love to be able to play a good play the because I only yeah. primarily play guitar. Yeah, I can get the you know the sequences. Yeah, and my fingers on a guitar, not on a keyboard. Yeah, so it would be nice to get that back. And mm. yeah. Wow. But anyway, let's crack on with some questions. Okay. Can you give us a quote of inspiration that you would You first, give? Piers. Well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got one, but I'll let you do, you do it first. Do you mean to inspire listeners? or Yeah, to inspire us? listeners, to inspire the music scene. Okay, so I'd say music is a common language wherever you live. And music is the one thing that brings us together other than food and drink. Go out, listen to music you've not heard before. Meet people you've not met before. The world is a small place, but it's a big place, and there's beautiful people out there. That's a really good quote. Cool. Loads better than mine. I'm going to come up with now. <laughs> but that's, that's loads better than mine. It reminds me of Stuart Copeland's thing, "Journey into Music," by right. the way, which I will talk about later. Very interesting. Mm. Um, so the value of music. I've been saying for years. Yeah. He said, "I thought, oh, damn." damn he, he said it on television. Now I'm going to be Copeland. Stuart Copeland. <laughs> Stuart Copeland. <laughs> Drummer, you know. um, but anyway, uh, what was I going to say? My inspirational quote is uh, The man who never made a mistake never did a day's work. Very true. Not as good as yours. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I write the lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> Fair play. Right, are you two originally from Knotts then? Piers? No, I am not. <laughs> I've lived in Nottingham for 22, 23 years now. I moved here in 97. Uh, I'm originally from Oxford. Uh, I grew up in a tiny village in Oxfordshire, uh, so small that you blink and you miss it as you drive through. What's it called? It's called Piddington. I've heard of that. Have you? Yeah, it used to come from Henley on Thames. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> Henley, beautiful. <laughs> no, it's horrible. Don't ever go, <laughs> no, go for a holiday. Nice nice than Piddington. So, yeah, I, I, I spent my first 16, 17 years in a tiny little village with. 
21 houses, I think there is. Bloody hell, wow. wow. Tiny, so grew up on a farm. Very different from my background. Uh, wow. There were six kids in the village. They all went to a different school to me. So wow. I, this is going to sound very sad. I actually grew up quite insular, quite on my own. So I learned to read, entertain myself, listen to music and just uh, write stories, just become self-sufficient. Um, got the opportunity to leave as soon as I could. And I, just, <laughs> I took that with both hands. <laughs> Fair play. Um, ended up various places, um, lived just outside of Lancaster for a while. Um, my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, um, we decided that we'd move to Nottingham because we came here so often for yeah. nights out. So we were coming pretty much three out of four weekends in a, of a month. And we just said, look, we spent so much time here, why don't we just move? Just yeah. Just be easy. Stop doing. Let's, let's yeah. sleep, in our, sleep in our own house rather than on our mate's floors. Yeah. So we, we moved to Nottingham. Um, we were both lucky we could move with work. So we kept our, kept our jobs. So we got, uh, got a house. We lived in Basford for a while. Now we live in Basford. Um, Nottingham is, I think, the greatest city in the world. Mm. I cool. love it. I agree with that. I'm going to ask you more questions on this. Yeah. No, I, I, <laughs> I agree. I, I, had a compl- I actually, uh, not born in Nottingham, but I was brought up in Nottingham. Yeah. Um, my earliest memories are of growing up in Cinder Hill. Yeah. And moved around a little bit, but still in the Nottingham area. And then I spent the majority of my teenage years uh, in the Asbury Broxton Council Estate. I grew up there. Yeah. Uh, kicked out of school. <laughs> uh, it's a long story, but uh, yeah. So basically, um, uh, I'm actually from Nottingham. So I'm not Nottingham born and bred. Yeah. Nottingham bred. I was born somewhere else, and then but spent. I've spent most of my life here. And yes, I agree, Piers. Nottingham is the greatest city in the world. Cool. Um, I think that you know. I think that a lot of people in Nottingham don't value just how great a place Nottingham actually is. Yeah. I mean, I think that there's a very there's a big difference between Nottingham City and Nottingham District. Yeah. And I think obviously the estates sort of got their own personalities and whatever else. But I think that you know Nottingham as a as a as a conglomeration is the greatest city in the world, and it's got a lot going on for it always and always has had. And I think a lot of people don't realise just what a great place Nottingham is. I'd say if you I like if it. You're from here and you don't appreciate it. Try living somewhere else. Yes, I did then, do and that. Then, and then come back. And that's exactly what I did when I, when I went to, did my degree. Uh, I did it somewhere else, we haven't mentioned where. And like, you realise how great Nottingham is. Yeah. And I could not wait to get back. Every other weekend I was back here because it was so lively and so happening and there was you know, such a lot going off. No matter what you wanted, it was there somewhere. And one of the things about Nottingham I really like is everything's walking distance. Yeah. Not like London, where you have to catch about a bus and a tube if you want to go to one pub, but a bus and a tube to go to another. Yeah. In Nottingham, the furthest you've got to walk is probably, I mean, obviously, from here to Mansfield Road. Yeah. You know, and that's, and that's, that's literally you going across the city. Mm. And I think so. Everything, so one of the things I really like, I've always liked about Nottingham is it's, you know, there's always been a quite, the city particularly, been a lively alternative scene, you use that term as a general thing, there's always been a lively alternative scene, yeah. quite a supportive scene, um, and everything's within walking distance. Cool. I, I, walking I, you've, distance. Answered, you've answered my question for the second half. I, I, I would say actually <laughs> even outside of the alternative scene, I'd say people in Nottingham are yeah. generally quite friendly. And open I, I think so. Yeah. I mean, I've had mates from down south who've said the same thing. Yeah. I mean, mates of mine have come from down south and they say, you say thank you to the bus driver. What's all that about? Because yeah. yeah. that's because that's what we do here. Yeah. And you know, you're walking around and people will touch just I say, people are talking to you. Do you know them? No. And, and, and like and I said, that's how our team's always been. I've accepted that as normal. The village yeah. I grew up in, I grew my hair out when I was 15 and got my ears pierced. I was the devil. Yeah. You moved to Nottingham and everybody looked like me. Yeah, like, oh Nottingham God. City. Yeah, there's a big difference with city, <laughs> city districts. City and district is a big difference, but I mean, I think that Nottingham City itself, and within a few miles of the city, yeah. I think it is is like that. I think outside of that, it changes. Yeah, but I still think it's good, and I still like it. Yeah. Cool. So, what are your professions outside of the band then? You first base. So, um, I work with a group of. Well, I work. I work for a team, and we work with people with learning difficulties, autism and Asperger's. So we provide independent living, um, advocacy, navigating the um, DWP, getting work, finding them social things to do. Um, generally sort of acting as a parent in, in many ways. Uh, and it is the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. I genuinely look forward to a Monday morning. Oh, wow. that's really good. Yeah. Mm. And as they say, if 
you do a job you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah. It is so, like work. It's the weirdest thing. <laughs> oh, that's wow. cool. That's good. Uh, I'm sort of a, a, well, I'm a freelancer. I do different things. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I do is I work as a freelancer for a uh, an examination board. Oh, right. Uh, a music uh, v- vocational music examination board yeah. and my job is to support the moment I'm supporting 32 centres around the UK I'm supporting um, uh, the teachers or the assessors tutors yeah. and I'm what they call a quality assurance officer and, and it's a, basically a bit, a bit of a mouthful what I actually do is ensure that the centres know what they're doing yeah. know how, the, how to interpret the call of, interpret the qualification and how to uh, document effectively the qualification. So I do that. Yeah. I'm also, and that's my main thing I do. Yeah. And I visit centres around the country, schools, colleges, community centres, uh, all around the country, and I support teachers, assessors, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I also work as a freelance occasionally for another examination board doing something similar but not visiting. Yeah. Uh, you know, check effectively that they've done things correctly. And I'm also work for another one doing something similar, but I also am an examiner. So I actually mark examination scripts for one board, another board, and another board. Yeah. So that's mainly what I do. But I'm also uh, got my own guitar thing. Yeah, you know, and I teach. I, mean, I do that in the evenings. You yeah, know, I've been doing that for years. And I'm also an academic. Uh, I'm basically uh, doing my doctorate. Yeah, uh, in sociology, uh, but it's actually a music. Ba- it's just very simply. Basically, it's the actual PhD is validated by Department of Sociology because yeah. of my research question. Uh, okay. I've got a master's degree in popular music and culture, yeah. and I wanted to, to do that. But the, the professor that I needed to work with, who's written on topics I've written on, yeah. moved over from uh, to sociology. So I moved over to sociology. Yeah. And so uh, basically, I'm Sorry, doing. I'm just going to look something up. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. So uh, I've got a question. I, yeah, yeah, I can't remember. Can't remember who that's it right. is. That's fine. <laughs> so um, uh, so basically, what I'm doing is I'm researching into a particular music based. Uh, social area, yeah, and part of that will include auto ethnography for myself yes. of my activities in the 1990s with um, the record label, which I still sort of run, the mail order service and the shop and, and yeah. the organisation that I ran in the 1990s. Yes, um, so so basically it's a combination of, of sorry, yeah, no, carry on, sorry, <laughs> it's a combination of um, a sociological, anthropological, and political overview. Of a particular, uh, what you, I hate the word subculture for yeah. various reasons. I could bore you with rigid. Yeah. Uh, we'll call it a scene because I'm much happier yeah. with that. Um, and how that works. And I've got various uh, subject areas within that that I'm going to research that have never been researched before. Yeah. But that connects in with my uh, subculture that I'm involved in, which is the, the gothic scene. Yeah. I think the gothic scene. But it's it's going to be far more than that. It's not just going to be about what I did in the 1990s and this is the record label, these are the bands that I was in. That's what we did. It's more, it's more, far more overarching. And um, I t- I'm taking a neo Marxist perspective on yeah. it, um, considering. Um, Basically, the effects of, I'll call it paradigmatical world, world views, which yeah. could be political, and I won't go on about Brexit at all. Cool. It's, it's to do, I won't. <laughs> uh, it, it basically, very simply put, it's about your mindset of how you view the world is how you interact with a scene. Yes. So whatever happens in a scene, it's coloured by the glasses that you're wearing. Yeah. Okay? So if you, if you, if you believe one thing, then you see what you want to see. This is the, in the simplest yeah. ways, okay? So when, when people interact, you'll interpret it as being X yeah, because of the worldview that you hold. The worldview that you hold may or may not be connected to your class, the yeah. view, the, the work, whether you're working class or middle class. The working class or middle class um, background does colour the way you see things. So effectively, simply put, you may see something as subcultural and working class, yeah. subcultural and uh, sorry, countercultural and working class, middle class and subcultural, middle class and countercultural. Yeah. And those forces interleave uh, interleave with how you perce- how you ev- evaluate, interact with, uh, and understand any particular kind of social or political phenomena. 
Does that make sense? Oh, very much to me. I'm hoping Good. everyone else has caught up. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just going to relate to that. I've said it before and I, I keep saying it and some people don't understand my interpretation. I believe of what you're talking about is the word normal when people use it as, well, I do that because it's just normal. Not quite. I have, and I understand it. Yeah. But, but um, I've always said that the word normal is defined by one person. Oh, it's relative. Said, I see what you're saying. One yeah, person yeah, has said yeah. this is. It's intrinsically a relative, yeah. uh, yeah. relativist concept. Mm. But it's one person. That's has part said, of what I'm talking this about. Is yeah. yeah. This one person has said this is normal, and no one else has disagreed. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's like mm. yeah. That's part of what I'm talking about. But one of the things I'm, I'm going to be looking at is how I mean, you refer to stuff as the alternative scene, which is which is a, a catch-all term, could mean many different things. Mm. I mean, I don't, I'm not familiar with all the nuances of the metal subculture anymore. No. I, I can't talk about it, I just don't know. No, uh, I'm, I'm even shocked and I mean, I'm running a podcast about I mean, so many different things. I don't understand, my, my old students did when I was, when I was yeah. a lecturer. They told me about it all and I was like, okay, that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. But the thing is, what most people, what me talking about being normal, what most people accept as being normal, Normal. You said it. Obviously, it's a good point. Is that somebody somewhere said it, and everybody's just bought into it, like yeah. Emperor's New Clothes. Yeah. You know, um, that's true. But also from that, what is normal in one part of this country is different in another part of this country. Yeah. In the same scene, mm -hmm. and what is normal in, let's say, Portugal. Yeah. Is in the gothic scene, the yeah. subculture is what I'm interested in. I hate to have subculture by using because people know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, is not the same as in England. Yeah. Is not the same as in America. Is yeah. not the same as in Germany. So even within something that seems to be um, um, much of a muchness, to use a term, is actually not the same. Now there's this concept in sociology called translocalism and transnationalism. Yeah. And what that says, and I really love this, is actually going to be part of what I'm doing. Yeah. Is uh, the idea you can have more in common with somebody that sits in in Boise, Idaho. Yeah because you share the same uh, uh, paradigmatical view, there's somebody who lives next door to you. Yeah. So what is local, what is normal, actually is completely variable. And this, that is actually, that's where it comes into what I'm talking about, because yeah. transnationalism, translocalism, and the effects of technology. Yes. I mean, this podcast is going to go out, yeah. and people are going to listen to, to this, and they're going to relate to it, or not relate to it. Yeah. And somebody from um, Antarctica working on, a, on, a, on an ice station, maybe listening to things, yep, yeah, bloody Charvel guitars, yeah, absolutely agree with that. Yeah. yeah. But somebody lives next door to me, what I'm talking about. So the idea of community... Yeah, somebody in Boise, Idaho is going to be delighted. Yeah, but yeah, but it's like the idea of community, the concept of community can be, is, is absolutely variable. It's, I mean, the traditional Marxist view of community is it's completely rooted to your locale. Yeah. Um, various neo-Marxist views, and I actually agree with this, say that that is not necessarily true. It may be true, but it's not necessarily true. And obviously the effects of, of mass media and technology can completely and utterly expand the concept of identity yeah. and uh, belonging. Yeah. And this is something I really believe in. You know, we, we do, because obviously Piers and I also helped to run a radio station as well. Yeah. Nightbreed, Nightbreed Radio. So right. and we know that is listened to throughout the world. I'm going to have to have a look at that. Yeah, that's, it's internet. It's on Twitter. Yeah, I'm going to put a link in the show out. notes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so we, ca we kind of, so I, I'm very much into it. So that kind of connects with what yeah. you say about normal, what's yeah. accepted, was what was referred to as norms and values. Accepted norms and values change. Yeah. Somebody somewhere says that that's, that's X. It may yeah. or may not be X, yeah. or it may be X with a Y on it. That's the sort of I really so my next and I can bore people <laughs> rigid talking so, about it for, for hours. So I don't want to go on too much more, but I do, we say, off already? I, do want to, I do want to ask, Yeah. what do you think of John Cage? John Cage? Yeah. <laughs> It's okay, I suppose, really. Four minutes, 30 Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I did, I... I did, just the way you were going on then, it just... John wow, Cage, John Cage, I mean, that. John I Cage... Yeah, I did a remix of that. You've done a remix? <laughs> I sent it to John Cage and I didn't hear anything back. That's a John Cage joke, listeners. Um, <laughs> I will put a link in the show notes I, I think to the I, YouTube video. I tell you what I think to that. I think that the, the, this again, this brings back to class. Yeah. Right? I, I grew up on a council estate. 
I didn't even meet any middle class people until I was 17. My worldview was you left school, you went in the army, yeah. or you or basically you went into various other things, yeah. right? I didn't know colleges existed. They were beyond my comprehension. I was never told about them. Um, I eventually found a college and went to did various things. And I met people who were doing these things called A-levels, and I thought they made them up. I said, A-levels? I'm doing bloody Z-levels. What are you talking about? Because So what actually happens is, is that I'm doing a lot of research uh, at the moment with for my, for my doctorate yeah. about class and class views. And one of the things I, I find really interesting is the idea that, that it's the middle classes who have the access to... Um, basic education and, and higher views yeah. but also the time to actually discover this so yeah. you know, John Cage I, I respect what he's done and all that all good you know I like yeah. that however growing up in Broxdale that is completely it is, it is, you might as well come from another planet yeah but so so if you, if you try to explain to somebody say yeah he's got this, like, this concept about silence his music itself blah blah blah, blah, blah. they go what are you fucking talking about you know it's like kind of, yeah. so I'm saying to you this is, this is actually a good example of a class view it's like kind of for me I because I, 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 I can see both because I, you know I'm lucky to have had some education after I left school I don't know yeah. while I was at school you know um, but I, you know education afterwards that I can understand this idea once upon a time I couldn't have even understood what you were saying yeah, because it's completely at my reference point. Yeah, and this is exactly what I'm saying: is that again, it's your worldview. Yeah, you know, I, you know, so I never, I never heard of anything like this until I, till I, year, years after I left school, <laughs> years and years and years. I don't like John, what was this John Cage bloke what are you talking about? You know, I've been going to have a full-on conversation at some point with some, someone about John Cage because as soon as I found out about, I don't know much dad, about him to be fair. I just know that. And I just all I know is that four four thirty three. Apparently, and I was like, apparently wow. you can hear coughs. Well, you <laughs> <laughs> and and people sniffing. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. is <laughs> yeah. okay. With the band, we'll go on to the last question in this section, and we'll take a break. But with the band, what hurdles have you personally faced, and how have you overcome them? Hurdles with a band. Um, mm. I would say we we definitely were frustrated before we decided to do this project mm. with the fact that we couldn't get Arcane Winter going again. Yeah, uh, we were both sort of chomping at the bit for a good couple of years. It was about three years, wasn't it? Yeah. So we'd 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 really wanted to sort of get going, and I was having ideas. Trevor was having ideas. So I'd say almost the formation of this project has has overcome the problems that we were having, if that makes yeah. sense. So we decided that actually we'd strike out on our own. Um, we looked for another bass player. Um, we drew up a short list of names for who we wanted, and there was one name on the Justin list. Justin was top. Justin was top. Um, we approached Justin uh, in such a way that he didn't feel pressured to, to join. Um, I was so pleased when he really joined. He, as, yeah. soon, as soon as he sent me the text, the same. Oh, yeah. <laughs> His text said, Let's crack on. This new band sounds interesting. And I thought, that's it. Yeah, we, so we, you're we, in. We're formed. That's it. We've got it. Yeah. He understands completely what yeah. we want and he's into it totally. And, and, oh, it's great. We, we, it's great we, working with him. I mean, we've known him for so long as well. It's like, it, oh, it's just like, it's, it's the easiest thing walking into, the, walking into a room with him. Yeah. You know I mean, you know, sometimes when you. And I would say this is probably true for any band we've been in. Sometimes you're in a in a room and somebody walks in and you're a bit uncomfortable around them, or you don't know them as, as well as the others. And it can make sometimes making music quite quite awkward. Hmm. With us three, it's just like, do you know what? It's just we've known each other for years. It's the yeah. easiest thing. Yeah, around. we've got so much common ground. We've known each other for so long. It's you know we. And, and Trevor was saying, you know, the, the thing about wearing other people's underpants. Yeah. It, it's comparable. You know, I'm not saying I'd, I'd wear, <laughs> I'd wear somebody else. But you know what? There's a oh, certain man. comfort to, to to being in in a room with the people I'm with. So, yeah, I, 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 the lo it's a very long and complicated way of saying we've overcome our obstacles by actually forming this project. I don't think there's been ob oh. obstacles. I mean, appears is right. The, the obstacle we had, we wanted to get going. Appears and I wanted to get going again. Yeah. Because we're mates anyway, we want we just put that band on on hold yeah. for various reasons, and we want to, we kind of respect the reasons why. And the years went by. I worked with with um, Death Party UK and did stuff like that, and yeah. and you know we wanted to get back to doing this post punk thing again. And like I say, 
I think Pierce is right with that. That was the main obstacle mm. is the three years of waiting. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and then obviously, think, you know, then. And that's, and that's certainly on. not to point the finger at, at, at former members. They had issues. That yeah, they had, they they had, there's, there's reasons why I had to stop. We understand that. You know, there's, it's all good. Have, yeah. Um, but I mean, I think as, as a, once we've started as Chaos Peak, I mean, I don't think there's any obstacles we've had other than what anybody else would have, really. I, don't, I can't, I don't think it's been. So we, we were very lucky in our early days. So we initially were called Chaos Black. Right. Uh, well, I suppose that's an obstacle, wasn't it? And that was almost my obstacle today because right. I'm dyslexic and I <laughs> kept too. reading oh, right. it okay. Chaos Black. Okay. And Me then too. I'm searching right. on Facebook looking for right. Chaos <laughs> So, yeah, we were initially, for a first sort of couple of months, we were, we were Chaos Black. Now, we hadn't released or recorded anything yeah. at that point, but... You know, and sort of done some logos. I'd put, you know, formed a, a Facebook page. You know, all, all, the, done stuff all, that. You, all yeah. the stuff that you kind of have to do nowadays. And a good friend of ours actually pointed out that um, Chaos Black is a name that's being used by. It's copywritten. It's copywritten, and or, it would it may. So we we thought we could we could. Are oh, we going to just bluff this out? I thought, you know what? We're really early on in our career. Yeah, we just change the name. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. can't be bothered. Just, I mean, so we thought instead of kind of like arguing with multinational corporations yeah we thought you know what we'll just change the name it's yeah. easy yeah. enough done yeah. so I mean I don't think we've actually had any obstacles no, not really. I mean obviously you know it's difficult for original bands to get gigs these days yeah. but yeah. we're also we're of a certain age where we, we can't actually play that many shows no. like once or twice a month does us yeah and at the moment we've got nothing in February but we start in March we've got maybe yeah. two yeah. definitely got one yeah. maybe cool. two yeah. and so I don't think there's been any Obstacles. I can't think of any. That's really cool. I can't think of anything. I think it's because obviously we've made, we've all been mates for many years. We've known each other for many, many years. Yeah. So it's like kind of, and obviously we've got an inf we've got a you know an infrastructure uh, where Chaos Fleet just dropped in. It's and basically it's the remnants of the uh, my old business, Nightbreed Recordings, Nightbreed Radio. It just dropped yeah. in on top. Um, and one of the things I do say about, about Chaos Bleak, and I mean, some people in the gothic scene have been saying we're, we're a goth super group, which yeah. is, I don't, I don't know what to say about that, but, you know, because obviously uh, Piers and I have been in other bands. I used to be in Every New Dead Ghost, Midnight Configuration. You know, obviously we've got you know, Death Party UK, Arcane Winter, and now we've got Chaos Bleak. And, and obviously you, you work with Midnight Configuration. You and I together with, yeah, in right. Arcane yeah. Winter. Yeah, you were, you were in bands other bands just before yeah. that. Justin was in famously in 13 Candles, which yeah. are still sort of going. Yeah. Yeah. And also he's, he had... Um, it's Crimson Brigade. The Crimson Brigade, which is still in, yeah. which mm. is a more of a black metal project yeah, yeah. really like that band yeah well that's just, that's that's just a few there. years ago so, well there you go that's yeah. just our bass player yeah, yeah. different yeah. and different guys yeah, yeah. so we, we're kind of like uh, i mean I, I don't think we've, i think we just literally one of the things i i say about chaos bleak is that all of the mistakes are made with production engineering composition promotion with other yeah. bands or what I learned from other bands yeah I've just gone straight into Chaos Play mm. almost almost like a, a, you know like a, a, a you know an injection of adrenaline yeah. straight in there and like as, as Justin said from day one the first practice onwards we were there yeah. yeah and I think it's because we're all of a certain age and we've had a certain amount yeah. of experience also, yeah, same. and we just so in a lot, a lot of respects we've had more uh, we, we come breaks from, and, yeah. and problems purely and simply because of the background and then obviously because of the background we come from we've just activated yeah. stuff but I, think, I think because we come with a lot of experience yeah. I think we're probably quite good at looking out for pitfalls and, and, and obstacles I think the only pitfall is, 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 a, is in so the you've had it, so you've yeah. had your hurdles yeah. Yeah. basically I guess going back to what Trev said earlier I'm trying you know, to think um, a man who's never made a mistake has never, never done his work, work you know? well, do you know what I think we've actually made our mistakes in the past I, I've made Book loads, <laughs> you know, um, and you, you do. And I think that with uh, somebody was talking to us on the internet saying, it, you know, it seems like Chaos Bleak, you've just basically everything you've learned from the previous bands yeah. has seamlessly gone into this. And I said, mm. you know what, that's absolutely right. And that's how I feel. Yeah. I mean, there's things I do differently production wise with Chaos Bleak than anybody else. Mm. Um, but a lot of the, the techniques and the ideas and the mic positions and the amplifier combinations and yeah. everything else, I've already learned that. Yeah, and I'm now putting into practice, and I think I think I think the only, the only the only hurdle we've had it's a very minor one is in the gothic scene. Whenever a new band comes out, people go, "Oh yeah, 
expecting you not to be as good as your old band. And, there's a, yeah. and I think that's the only hurdle we had to get over. Yeah. As soon as we played up in, up in the Shadow of the Castle Festival, yeah. we blew everybody that yeah. away in one gig. Yeah. I think everybody said that you're much better live. Our, than, first, you know. our first gig was a, was a festival. Um, so second gig really was festival too. Um, yeah, yeah, that's true. So yeah, first yeah. couple of gigs were festivals. So we're we're playing, reasonable size we're, audience. We're playing to initially quite big audiences, and also people who don't necessarily they're not familiar with the band. As but they are they are discerning individuals. They're the people yeah. at those festivals who are effectively our peer groups. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, and they yeah. and we, it's quite nerve wracking and going on in front of people that know every band you've been in, yeah. know all know everything about your label, know all about you listen to your radio station. Yeah. And you think, okay, yeah. we've got to go on. And we, and, but the thing is, you know, I think from first, second gig, first gig I think that was pretty good, but yeah. second gig yeah. I think it's really cemented this. Definitely, definitely. And so I think yeah. the only thing, the new, right. you get a certain amount of rec recalcitrance as people wanting, because obviously I've been in other bands and people go, who are fans of that band? Go, oh, you've got a new band, oh, I don't know. But there's only that. Yeah. I mean, for me, I, Funeral, don't you? Yeah, play. Yeah, oh god, <laughs> I was in uh, a band called Midnight Configuration, and uh, for many years before, I was in a band called Every New Dead Ghost. Yeah, and what happened? It's a long story, but basically, we got a chance to play in Los Angeles yeah. one day and Mexico City the next. Yeah, and so of course, I took the chance, and so so Death Party UK, which is. Most of, of also of people support our Wind. So basically, oh, I'm getting the bands mixed up. Um, <laughs> midnight configuration. So basically, what I was, we said this this promoter wanted midnight configuration to play Los Angeles one night, Mexico City the next. And I said, okay, we'll do it. Uh, but my wife did backing vocals for for midnight configuration anyway. But my wife and I are in, are in Death Party UK. So I said, I'll tell you what, you get you get one band, you get another three because basically it's only three of us, and we could be in two different bands. And and um, anyway, long, long story. Short, Sure, was we play LA, a bit of a mad adventure across borders and motorways, yeah. and flew flew into Mexico City. I tell you, so tired you wouldn't believe it. Jet lag, yes, just a tad. No, not more than a tad. Anyway, what was we were on stage in Mexico City, and all these Mexicans were shouting for songs from my old old band and stuff like that. And that was kind of that was kind of nice, really. That was. Kind of, oh, what? Oh, we can't play that. We can't, we can't do it. It's always flattering and annoying, isn't it? It's like we've not come. What was really bad is when Nick started playing a riff for a particular song. Yeah. And, we, and the audience went mental, and we think, I haven't got the backing track. We can't play this. You know. <laughs> Deep things, don't we? And it, I think, it, yeah, then he's been playing another song. We, in, ironically, you know, you know. Anyway, so, so yeah, yeah. Anyway, so, yeah. yeah. How do we come to that? Yeah. Me right I, I, me I, I, I would say that um, because our first couple of gigs were, were festival gigs. It was quite interesting how hardcore fans of our of our previous bands were stood at the front. Oh, <laughs> no. impress me! Two or three songs in, they are it impressed, was, and it's it all right. Those those are the barriers that we need to break down, and this will be true of any band, I guess. Yeah, that, I mean, that's the only people, thing we need to really. win over the people that we previously already won over. In different bands, in different yeah. Bands. I mean, what you tend to find is, I mean, obviously, because I've been in so many different bands over the years, is you get certain people that will only like that part of your career, or that part, or that yeah. part, or yeah. that part. Yeah. And so it's like, and that's another one of the good things about technology is you can do different things because I can play all different kinds of stuff. Yeah, and it's nice to be able to do that. Yeah. So you know, the nine yeah. minute piano ballad is coming. No, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's take a break for five minutes, and then we'll get back into the second section, which is not some rock. I just wanted to take a moment to remind you, get on the podcast player because you'll get music, reviews and news as well as the chat. So, check it out. Yes, red lights on. These are brilliant, aren't they? I used to... Yeah, I've got my, one of those. Um, on my undergrad and on my postgrad um, yeah. matches on one. I've, yeah. st I've still got them. Yeah, yeah, I've still got mine. See, the thing is, I started out by bringing my MacBook with me and bringing two condensers. You don't need them. And then I realised how good the sound quality yeah. is on this. Yeah, you don't need a bit tilted, right? Mm. So, yeah, you don't need but, it. Yeah. Right, welcome back to the second half. This is the Not Some Rock section in the old salutation, and I'm here with Chaos Bleak. Hello. Not Chaos Black. <laughs> no, not Chaos Black. <laughs> We're bleak rather than black. Bleak. So, okay, excluding the alternative scene, what do you love and enjoy about Knotts as a geographical location and as a city? Uh, well, I can definitely say I love the way people are so open-minded here. Um, yeah. More often than not, people are just friendly. Mm. Um, I have lived in the south and I've lived in the north, and I definitely would say that here is 
the best representation of just good, honest people. I, that might sound a little bit condescending, but people are nice here. Mm. Well, that's I I completely agree with that because I think it was last year or the year before we got Nottingham got voted as like the number one friendliest place in the country. Yeah, I'm going to do that. That's interesting. I, I yeah. So I I sort of will with work. Um, I work with a lot of Jamaican women. We'll go out for nights out. We we go to all sorts of places. Everywhere we go, people come up to me. Who are you? What do you do? And it's not... I like yeah. your hair. Yeah. I like, I, like, I like your hair is what I get all the time. You know, can I run my fingers while you are doing? <laughs> Personal boundaries. I, I really didn't. But um, yeah, people are just, on the whole, good and open-minded and fair. Hmm. Um, and also I like that it's a, a real diverse population in Nottingham as well. So I've, I've come from somewhere which is very, very white. Nottingham is not that. Um, not even it's a good it's mixture, a, it's isn't it? Good, it's a good mix. It's a good it's mixture. A good mix. um, yeah, I love it. It's a fantastic place. Yep. Mm. Mm. Good. We think we've already said this, really. Yeah. Yeah. I can't think of anything else. What, what I like about Nottingham is the geographical location. It's the middle of the country. Yeah. So you can go to the south relatively easy. If you if you if you're in a band, it's actually perfect. It's perfect. Because yeah. you know you can you know you, it's, north is not too far away, south is not too far away. Everything's okay. I mean, I think that for its geographical location is that it's central. Also, like the fact that when there's kind of lots of weather problems, Nottingham doesn't tend to get too much of it. No. I think because it's slightly high up, so you don't get too many floods. Even though there is in low lying areas, yeah. it's never it's never hit too badly. Um, and I, th I think what I like about it is it's because it's the centre of the country is that it's, it's not too much of any one thing here. Yeah. It's a balance. Yeah. And I think, I think that was what Piers was saying in a bit of a different way. I was saying that this Nottingham is balanced, a balanced city yeah. in every single way. Yeah. I've never heard that said before. I'd say also, yeah. I like that. Yeah, def definitely with it, us being so close to the M1. And it's it, balanced. It's, bang in the, it's balanced. It's bang in the middle of the country. Yeah. So my, my sister, coast ain't too far. The coast ain't too far. So my, my sister-in-law lives in Cambridge. My in-laws live in, in Buckingham. Easy to get to. My brother-in-law lives in Leeds. Easy to get to. Yeah, it's balanced. It's fantastic. Quite often when we have family get-togethers, we have them in Nottingham because it's yeah. central to all of us. Yeah. A lot of people do that, though, don't they? You know, like that we've known, they'll have things in Nottingham because it's easy for everybody to get to. Yeah. But yeah, so I think from, it's balanced. It's a balanced city. Yeah. 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 Plus you know. also it's got, it's got great nightlife. Um, I mean, there are just amazing bars and pubs here. What, the, the oldest pub in the world, the second oldest pub, and the fourth oldest pub? <laughs> I think we're sat in the second oldest pub in the world. Well, that's yeah. that's that's controversy. <laughs> at yeah, the moment. It is. since since I had Jay, the landlord here, on. Trust me, it's controversy because he's still not sure, obviously, on the timings of right, when this right. wasn't in, wasn't in. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah, I don't yeah, need yeah. to take the yeah. trip down, yeah. but it's like. Yeah, there's yeah. you still got you got two yeah. very old pubs and there's a third one. Well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the bell as well. Yeah, so I've seen the bells yeah. put that sign yeah. recently. Welcome yeah. to Nottingham, yeah. of the three oldest pubs. And I guess also <laughs> yeah. you do you do get. And I know a lot of people complain about this, but you get a lot of hen nights and a lot of stag nights come here because geographically it's good and there's lots of good clubs. Yeah. yeah. So just just sort of passing people on a Saturday night, you get such a wide. A I'll tell you something you'd be, you'd be interested in. Yeah, is that we, for our second promotional video, we did a song called "Funeral in Berlin." Yeah, it's got nothing to do with Nottingham. <laughs> well, it has, but in, in, in an obtuse yeah. way. We decided how we're going to do this promotional video. So we had different ideas, and videos is one thing we we kind of always brainstorming about what we're going to do. And we decided uh, between us. Why don't we walk around Notting with our cameras on a Saturday it's during the summer yeah. and just film us walking about? Yeah. And Nottingham is just such a lovely, eccentric city. You don't realise it until you see the video footage back. There's one bit in the video where we're walking into the lace market and there's a guy taking a piano for a walk. Oh, we never noticed! Yeah. We never noticed! <laughs> it's a guy taking a piano for a walk. Just, yeah. Just just, uh, it, just at the side of Void, between Void and, and it's like, the Old Angel. Guy's pushing a piano down the street. And we never noticed! We didn't notice until so we watched the, it. There's like three of us and, uh, and our long-term friend Stuart did all yeah. the videos for us. We're walking... We're and it's on the video. You can see this on the video. And not one of us noticed a man taking a piano for a walk. I think but that is Nottingham. It's like full of, of eccentric but lovely people. And you, because we live in Nottingham, you don't realise it until you stand outside and video it. Yeah. There's, I mean, and that video, you want to watch the video, Funeral in Berlin, is intercut with performances of the song. Yeah. And obviously the backing track is. But there's loads of... of 
fantastic Nottingham characters. Yeah. They just happened to be there. None of it was scripted. Mm. We just kind of went, and we also filmed. I mean, you know, we, we, we bumped into her. people. Yeah, we The met. Hula Woman. But, you know, and, and well, fantastic. We, we were, were um, oh, just just by the tunnel that goes under. In the, um, in the park. In the park, yeah. No, I've never been there before, but Stuart was saying we really need to shoot a video there because of the rock. Yeah, I need and to go there. Oh, it's, it's, still beautiful. Beautiful. it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And we, if you look at some of our promo pictures, they've taken in there. Yeah. And like, uh, on the way there, we saw a, a lady who was filming a promo video uh, for her hula hoop yeah. company. Was, was it? Um, uh, Planet Hoops. Planet Hoops. So she had. And so we said, do you fancy being in the video? She said, yeah, okay then. And so it's like kind of, we've, it's she, just. She didn't take a lot of uh, persuading. And it's like, this, yeah. this yeah. thing <laughs> Nottingham though, is that you've got, Loads of really interesting people yeah. all, all around you. You know, because you live there all the time, you don't always see it. No. Other people who come in from Nottingham think, what the bloody hell's going off here? Oh, so, you know, if you look at the video, you'll see loads and loads of activities and you'll just go, yeah, that's Nottingham. That, yeah. that is Nottingham. When, it's an eccentric city when, and I like it for it. When I, when I used to come here back in the sort of the, the 90s, uh, we'd always make a point of going to, to watch the, the xylophone man. Yeah, he's gone give, now. Give him, some, you know, give him some money. You know, a proper old, old-fashioned character. Yeah. Nottingham's full of unusual the, characters. The, the guy does cockles. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's loads of, so the, yeah, the cockle man. Yeah, the cockle man. I mean, it's like so Nottingham's got a lot, of, a lot of very unusual, eccentric, but lovable people. And yeah. it's only when you stand outside of it that you really notice. We didn't know, we didn't, we had no idea what we were going to come across in the video. None of it was scripted. We just filmed everything yeah. and then spliced it together to make a, a kind of a narrative. <laughs> and it's just like you've got this person, that person. Then, then we got we got towards the end of the filming, we got these two girls that just jumped in, photobombed. You know, and it's like kind of you know. So that it's that it's that, it's that. and if cool. you'll see in the video, you'll see yeah. in the video, you'll laugh, you'll laugh, you'll re, you'll relate to it. I think that's probably one of our most watched videos. Yeah, and I think it's people from Nottingham or not, not from Nottingham. They want to see what's going on, and they think, "What is this crazy city with this, the guy with the placard <laughs> oh, about Satan is oh, real?" Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? oh my word, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like yeah. none of this was scripted. We just yeah. literally said, and we went around and says, and then yeah, we're going to film everybody that day. And then there's yeah. Skelly Bob with this Skelly skull Bob, yeah. skull thing. And it's like, the, there's loads of stuff we did, just couldn't fit in the video. Yeah. yeah. But my favourite is the piano man. Because yeah. what is funny is that the four of us just didn't even notice him. And he yeah. walks past us with the piano, clearly on video. You can see him clearly on video. Because you said, yeah. well, look out for the bit with the piano man. I went, what piano man? I don't know who piano man Yeah, he plays in um, Lace Market all the time. Yeah. Really? So but it's just odd that we just... Well, Hockley. Yeah, we're, just, we're, just, we're just walking along. And we never, because yeah. Nottingham is full of, of, of eccentric we, we individuals. We really yeah. And thinking, we didn't even see it. And we didn't even see it till we saw the video back. Wow. So there's that. That'll, that'll give you a laugh. Just, just Google. Uh, it's, it's, on, it's on YouTube now, isn't it? YouTube, yeah. We put some of the videos on YouTube. There's, we're behind shit yeah. with those. I will find. I will Go on Facebook. All Facebook the, has been viewed some All of the links will be in the show notes. So I think, I think last time I saw, I think it was like 15,000 times or yeah, something. Been yeah. Wow. Somewhere. And a lot of people sort of from all around the world have seen it too. So I, I, I so it's an advert for Nottingham. We're going to get a Nottingham. Well, we have because we love the place. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's the whole video is done with affection. It's like saying, because obviously, you know, uh, from back in the 90s, Nottingham was the centre of, uh, well, it was one of the centres of, of the Gothic scene, the Gothic underground. Yeah. I mean, everybody goes about Leeds in the 80s, that's absolutely true, it was. But in the 90s, it was Nottingham and London, I, yeah. I think, really. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and obviously people, when I was running uh, the Nightbreed shop, people come from all over the world. All yeah. over the world, because Nottingham was legendary in yeah. the Gothic scene, yeah. oh, cool. and like you know, people would come That's literally from Australia, from South Africa. Yeah. People who literally who specifically yeah. went out of their way to come to visit Not Nottingham and Nightbreed, because what you, you found is that because we obviously we Nightbreed, we'd be talking about Nottingham, and to a certain degree, Nottingham became mythic. Yeah, to people, it's like kind of like, oh wow, you know, yeah. you went into such, just such a problem, so and so. That's famous because it's been talked about by the library. Well, on that subject, yeah. can you tell us a story or myth or like, I can. I'll let Piers, locally interesting. I've got I've got thousands of them, but I'll let Piers start this one because I'll be here all day. A locally interesting story, so mythic story, or mythic or, story. Mythic or just something. About knots. I've got so, loads. Um, I would say for me, so in the time that I was coming to Nottingham, 
um, before we moved here, I mean, we'd always go to the Angel, and we'd always go to the Tap and Tumbler, and the weird thing was, you'd always see people from bands you knew. Yes. How often did you did meet up you? in the Tap? So you'd be walking past Cradle Filth in the so, Tap. Yeah, so there would be, so yeah, Cradle Filth would be in the Tap. They would nearly always be there. Um, yeah. Suspiria would be in the Tap. Yeah. Most of the ghosties would be in the tap. Yeah. You go to the Angel and you'd see possibly members of Pitch Shifter. And Verukas. And Verukas. Yeah. And, and so for me, it was like, I'm not saying I was ever sort of, you know, star spotting or starstruck or whatever, but you know when you, you stood in the queue to get served and you're next to like a musician, you think, dude, I've just been listening to your music. Mm. Yeah. yeah. For me, that says so much about Nottingham in the way that the musicians were also out. People would you be. see people regularly, yeah, yeah, people you know, regularly out all the time. And then there's people that introduce me, but I can't remember yeah. which band they were from. But then you'd, you'd get sort of local celebrities like Axe Man, yeah, and you'd just see them all over. Not the seen him for years. But once you'd see him, it was like you see him everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I can interpret the question differently. I, I know a lot about the ghost stories of Nottingham. Yeah, and there's obviously all the famous ones. Yeah, but I know some ones that aren't so famous. Oh, go on then. Um, one of my favourites, because uh, I actually looked at your questions, this is the one of the things I remember. Cool. Um, when I first moved to Nottingham, well, I, was, I was at university and I came back. Yeah. That was my time, couldn't wait to get back to Nottingham. I say we moved back to Nottingham, it was literally the day after my course finished. And anyway, we moved back to Nottingham and um, I ended up in a, in a bed sit just off Forest Road. Yeah. Near the, near the graveyard, Rock Cemetery. Yes. And what it was is that the actual house was owned and run by Jamaicans who've been living there since the 60s. Yeah. And they got loads and loads and loads of ghost stories about those areas yeah. that, that, that they knew. They told me one. They told me loads, but I'll just tell you the one. Now, this concern, this is set in the 60s. Yeah. Um, and what happened was, is if you know the entrance to uh, Rock Cemetery yeah. on Mansfield Road, Apparently, I don't know this for sure, but apparently there was a flower seller yeah. that used to, used to work there, used to sell flowers to people coming visiting their loved ones and everything else. And this flower seller was, I think it was a lady, and she was quite old, and she was there for years. And this guy I knew, who was a young lad at the time, he, him and his mum would walk past the flower seller, and the flower seller used to make a fuss of him, you know, and, you know, oh, you know, he's some sweets and everything. Anyway, this went on, you know, for a couple of years, and he used to like seeing the flower seller. Anyway, one day they were walking up Mansfield Road, broad daylight, and they saw the flower seller. My mate went towards the flower seller, and his mother grabbed his hand and said, no, we're crossing over the road. They crossed over the road and walked down the other side. And later on, they said, well, why, why couldn't you see so and Because she died last week. Wow. wow. There's loads of ghost stories about Nottingham. Loads and loads and loads. Because obviously growing up in, in Aspley and Broxtow, yeah. there's loads of ghost stories there. Loads. So I've kind of, there's the stories that aren't commonly known. Yeah. There's the usual ones about the ghost in the cellar here and whatever else upstairs yeah. and the white lady at, at, at New, um, Newstead Abbey and whatever else. Uh, but there's, the Nottingham is full of ghost stories. Yeah. But you have to dig and usually it's amongst communities and they'll yeah. say I mean I grew up in, in Astley uh, Astley and Broxtow and there's uh, Astley Miners Welfare locally it's called Creepers oh right right and it's called Creepers for a reason because it's basically loads of people said they've seen ghosts there uh, and when I was a young lad, I used to have a newspaper around and nobody wanted to deliver to Creepers. And what happened was, is that I did deliver a few times and I thought I saw someone, but I, I, I would quite literally say it was probably nerves. Yeah. But what happened was one time I was in the shop and this lad comes in who'd been delivering on, round seven it was, delivered to, to, um, to Creepers. And he comes in and he said to the, said the guy's name who owns the shop, and he said, I've just been frightened. And he started telling a story about how he saw something moving amongst some trees. It's still the same, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's still the same as it was when I was a kid. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, yeah. And basically, after that day, he refused point blank ever to deliver to that sh that that um, place again. What he used to do is pay me to come on the round with him to deliver that one paper. Okay. So I, I did it. But what's really weird is a natural anomaly as you walk up this main road. As you walk off the main road, you can go into a dip and up again. And for some bizarre reason, you can't hear the road anymore. Oh, it's right. really some kind of natural sort of sonic strength. Reverber Reverberate so, null. It was, it was a, I mean, I know I can't say, yeah, you, know, you thought you saw something, you thought you heard yeah. something, but I'd, I'd say it was nerves. But everybody calls it creepers, even to this day. Oh, wow. And so the, that's, uh, the, there's all sorts of people that have seen this, seen that, seen the other. Yeah. And, you know, 
So that's that's a commonly known story out where I used to, where I grew up. Cool. Wow. Right. A bit of a hypothetical question, but a person gets off a train or bus, checks into their hotel, comes into the bar you're at, and says, "I've never been to Nottingham before. Where is the one place you suggest I check out before I go home?" Piers, what do you reckon? Ooh. Okay, it could be anywhere. So I, we definitely depend on which bar you were in. So if you're a, if you're here at the Sal, I'd definitely say, well, stay here for a couple. Yeah. Um, I definitely recommend the um, the trip. Um, go and have a look at the ship. Mm. Don't touch it, obviously. <laughs> the, <laughs> don't touch your <the> ship. <laughs> <laughs> well, mostly because it's covered in dust. It's also behind a glass c- cabinet. There is that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Then there's a pregnancy chair that's there as well. Don't sit on yeah, the pregnancy chair. Yeah. So there, mate. Um, I mean, depending, oh, depending on mm. what it would have been. So I would, I would definitely have said select a disc. But it's gone now. But it's gone now, sadly. That was a legendary place, yeah. that was. Um, my, my earliest it can be a museum. Oh, or I, I would say Green's Windmill. I think Green's Windmill is a beautiful place, and it's it's so archaic. I'm trying to think of what, what I would say. I mean, there's so many things in Nottingham I really like. 29 Manor Street, isn't that them? Yeah, where every new dead ghost had its headquarters yeah. for a number of years. Now it just all yeah. it looks normal. Yeah. Back in the 80s, it had a massive... Papamashi skull outside about the size of this room. Oh right. Yeah, and it was and it was like kind of a beacon, quite literally, for anybody that was uh, wanted a place to stay or yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean somebody just described every new dead ghost as spotty face crass fans gone goth. I think that's <laughs> a bit unkind, but kind of sort of true. We were it's, and our it's not crass far, fans. It's not, far off. not far wrong, we're still, still we're still crass fans now. Um just but not spotty. Not, but we're not spotty, we just we just sort of <laughs> You know, late middle aged. Um, I'm trying to think of anywhere. You'd, you'd, I think I don't think there's any one place. I, I, I'd be struggling to prioritise one place over another because I think there's loads of interesting things and not always obvious things in Nottingham. Yeah, but I, 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 would, I would say you walk around with your eyes open because there's a lot of beautiful architecture. And then it's the caves of Nottingham. The caves, caves. And I, I don't mean the, the touristy ones, but no. all the others. I mean, Rock Cemetery is fantastic. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, there's that bit where it was supposed to be like a Druid's temple, yeah, yeah. which they've discovered recently. Lake, Lake I need to get up there soon. You've not been there? No, I haven't had a good wow, walk around. Wow, you're I've, out. I've joined a Facebook group that they were talking about the white building there with the columns. Mm-hmm. It's a and gorgeous place, yeah. But they were trying to work out what it was, and some people were like, well, it's a calf now. Yeah, we don't want to know what it is now. Yeah, what was it? I, I, yeah. I have no idea where it used to be. Supposedly, it was was the Grave place keepers. where they used to, well that's what I would have thought yeah. but supposedly it was where they kept the drunks and people because there's actually a cell in there oh, so it was like a police that's news to me I didn't even know about yeah. that so I've got to definitely take there's a lot of odd things now. about Nottingham yeah. you know yeah. There's a lot, I mean, obviously there's, you know, all, all the the, it, the caves and the rock yeah. buildings. It kind of makes sense to me, that building being that. that, because I've seen a few places in the outskirt towns of Nottingham. Yeah, I never knew that was a jail. They I had no knew jails, that. literally right. in the town centre. I centers. never knew that, yeah. I never knew that, that's news to me. Well, that's why I assumed it was, but I'm definitely going to have to double check this. Wow. <laughs> no, I never knew that. I, I, I really, really cannot prioritise one thing over another. I, I just can't. I can't say yeah. Yeah. You, you go there rather than anywhere else. I think that I can't. I'm going to have to not answer that one. So basically, go check out Ballwell. <laughs> <laughs> Ballwell's had a makeover. Yes, yeah, it's yeah. good now. Some, some parts of Ballwell are beautiful. The, yeah. the bogs are lovely. Yeah, they've had a makeover. Yeah. Mm. You know, they've kind of put, you know, I've got some great photographs of Ball where, where they kind of threw like shopping trolleys in the in the water and <laughs> fun things like that. But right. um, oh. I can't I can't prioritize that's, one. That's fine. We'll move on to the next Wollen one. Park, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, Wollen Park. Park. Wollen yeah Park. but it's like kind of I wouldn't say that's any better than the castle. No, or, no. I, I, I couldn't I couldn't pick one over another. Fair enough. We'll move on to the next one, which you said you're quite excited to talk about. I think, which is what is your most treasured musical object, and it doesn't have to be an instrument. Here's first. So I have enormous record collection. I've got about 85,000 records, um, CDs and and vinyl. My my most treasured thing is a copy of, and this isn't anything actually to do with Nottingham, uh, it's the second album from a band called Underneath What. Oh yeah. Uh, So Underneath What, the first band that I went to see with my girlfriend. Uh, we've been going out for a couple of days. We went to see Underneath What. Absolutely fantastic band. Uh, 
through MySpace, I got in contact with a singer and we became actually quite, quite close. Um, exchanged lots of messages and stuff. After a couple of years, I said to him, what happened with the second album then? I burn your copy off, he says, and sends me a copy of the album. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, a real sort of like progression from the first album, which is a brilliant mm -hmm. record. I've got nine copies of it. <laughs> but a year later, he sadly passed away. Yeah. So, so not only is it a sort of document. American, wasn't he? Yeah. Because we yeah. played with them, with my old, old band. We yeah. supported them once. Yeah. So, so nice not, guy. Not just a sort of document of, of, of a band I love, but, you know, mm. personally handwritten. And, yeah. You know, just, just an artist. It's nice. It's like nice. Somebody isn't I was it? close to. I know I've talked about it before, but that's the reason why they call it a record. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I would agree with It's that because it, yeah. it, they literally called recording because they said it was a record and it was just a record of yeah. your music. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. I think my most treasured musical instrument is my Pro Tools computer setup because basically with that I can create anything and do anything. Whereas obviously even though I love all my guitars and amps and everything else, they can only do big guitars. Yeah. Whereas Pro Tools, you can record vocals, drums, et cetera, et cetera. So I think for me, that's the most, most treasured thing. Yeah. Is my, not, I've got two computers running two different Pro Tools yeah. linked together. So I suppose as a- PC I'm or a, Mac? A Mac. <laughs> cool. Mac. <laughs> he said rather emphatically. Um, but um, the, that, that, my studio yeah. that is my most, you know, because it is an instrument, the whole thing to me is an instrument. Yeah. And also it, it freed me. Now you mentioned early on that you were dyslexic. Now I'm dyslexic yeah. too. I'm actually very, very severe. Yeah. I can barely write. So having a computer really helped open the world up to me because yeah. I couldn't handwrite anything. And obviously, similarly, so I can obviously got the computer to do all that. Yeah. And then the studio can also help me to capture, record yeah. music and give, and also all the ideas, all the crazy ideas are going on in my head musically, I can capture them. Yeah. I mean, it's like with, 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 uh, with Chaos Fleet, in the early days of writing ABR. songs. ABR. Sorry? ABR. ABR. Always be recording. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, at the moment we, we need to get your vocals done, Piers, for those two tracks that have been ready since Christmas. Well, my, well, my, uh, well, well my you've had flu and everything, yeah. haven't you? Um, we've got, the, basically when we were writing the songs, we had an idea and I was kind of, programming up these tracks and they're taking me down some strange alleyways and I think, oh my God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to explain to the rest of these lads what this is. Yeah. And the song that's going to be our next digital single, which is gonna, uh, called Watch the Night Sky and it's one of the earliest songs we, we recorded actually. Yeah. But it's coming out now. And basically it's, well, Piers will tell you about the lyrics, but it, the whole it, the whole focus is space rock. Yeah. My space rock influences. Yeah. And there's a bit of a story about how the riff and everything else, but generally the sound has got UFO samples, it's it's got um, literally from, from UFO. Yeah. So what happens is, is this is an example, is I have a crazy idea. And I'll say, I'm gonna go and grab the sound of the UFO from UFO, yeah. Ed Straker and all of that lot, and I'm gonna sample it and put it in a song. I'm gonna, and there's a song we're working on at the moment, which appears needs to do the vocals, a song called Grey Lady Walks. Yeah. And I recorded the backing track, and then Piers said what it was about. I says, well, actually, what if I was to sample the, the sound of, uh, of a woman, uh, the woman's voice from the intro music for the 1960s House on Haunted Hill, loop it and put it in the track? Yeah. So that it, it's things like that. Mm. that I, and I have these mad ideas, crazy yeah. fucking ideas that will not let me sleep at night until I do them. And so that is why that's the most precious thing because I, I don't get up in the middle of the night and record. You know, I don't. But the next yeah. day I might go, I'm going to go grab that sound. You know, I mean, yeah. I'll have an idea. I'll say, I want the sound of the introduction to Magno by Hawkwind, which, yeah. is, which is the polar wind, which we actually use as an intro thing live. Yeah. But I'll have all these, so that's what that enables me to do. Or I'll say, I've got an idea. I'm going to open a guitar solo in that key and in that key and using that amp and using that. And it enables me to do all that. Yeah. It frees me up and also allows me to do other musical projects as well that won't fit. You know, there's yeah. a on, on the I'm working on completing an EP for the Angel Fire project, and there's a track that I initially had with the Death Party, but why I didn't like it. Yeah, um, and basically it's blues, yeah, full on blues solo. Absolutely, it wasn't working any other paradigm. Yeah, it certainly wouldn't work in Chaos Blake, but I've, I've recorded it, it's there, it's in the can ready to go. I'll release it one day. 
I mean, so that's why that's most my most precious thing is my is my studio. I fully understand that because today, well, this morning I flattened my studio monitors. Yeah, I EQ. I've bought a measurement mic. I've got um, mm. an eighty twenty four Behringer. Yeah, EQ to basically yeah. it sits in front of the monitors. Everything else then goes straight into that straight yeah, into the monitors, yeah. and I can turn it off, turn it on. But when I started taking the readings of the sweeps, yeah. which you go from like fifty to twenty thousand k. I started flattening it, took out all the peaks, and the, the EQ looked crazy. I didn't realise how yeah. bad my room was. My mm. wife then decides to come up, startles me a bit, because I didn't realise she'd come into my studio whilst I'm oh. listening to a bit of Prodigy. Right. And so she startled me, and I said, oh, I'm glad you're here. She went, what? I said, sit down. Name me a track that you know well. And it took us about, I don't know, about 10 minutes for her to find a track she liked. Now, I started turning off the equalizer and turning it back on and she went I didn't realize how bad music was <laughs> and she, I was like what do you mean and she said well it's on a lot of systems she didn't realize that she couldn't hear certain yeah, stuff that's right yeah. she couldn't yeah um that's absolutely right yeah but she couldn't she didn't realize that the vocals were they were a bit more rougher than in like the high def that I'd created yeah, Compared to the, because I a would her against like some small Fostex speakers, they're bookshop yeah. speakers. Yeah. I use them kind of, if it's going to sound like a, you know, a jukebox in the corner sort of thing, yeah. I'll listen on them. Yeah. Yeah. And she was just absolutely startled. She said, yeah. now I can understand why you spent so much bloody money on your hobby. <laughs> 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 so that was quite a relief. Yeah. She could have yeah. gone the other way. Yeah. So I completely understand. Yeah. That's all good. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Excellent. Right, would you like to name your influential band or artists that in, in that influences you as a musician and as the band? Okay, so I'll go first. Uh, so I have three main influences. Uh, Susie and the Banshees, absolutely. So not just Susie's voice, but just the composition. Yeah. yeah. Um, Severin's bass is just... A, a joy to joy to listen to. It's all about John McKay's guitar. John McKay's John guitar, McKay. absolutely. Yeah, um, very. Uh, John McKay, in my opinion, is a, is is the most unsung guitar hero I agree ever. With that. Yep. People do not realise that his style of guitar playing changed the way we listen to music. Yep. He is completely ignored. Yeah. I mean, yeah. basically, when he started using those kind of like double stops and stuff yeah. like that, which became the Banshee sound, yeah. which then other bands emulated. They copied, yeah. And it's beca it became part of the post-punk sort of canon. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, that yeah. was one man we that came, came up so with much. that. Yeah. Really and so nobody, much. apart from, say, us, who yeah. actually appreciates yeah. that. Yeah. John McKay, yeah. revolutionary. Absolutely. Absolutely. Did he, did he, in yeah. the late 70s as well. Yeah. You know? But also combined with Susie's beautiful vocals. Yeah. I mean, and everything. I mean, for, I, for me, I think she sings like a man. I just her delivery is just is so forceful. There's something very cool. unique. I, I, I'm a big Banshees fan as well. Love, love the Banshees. Um, the Doors. Um, I know they're not a popular band with a lot of people, but I just like I like songs that tell stories. I like them, and, yeah. and, and, and I like the way they are both blues and jazz influenced. I like the way that they they meld. Um, although actually, I think some of their best songs are, are not even those songs. Things like Spanish Caravan um, and My My Wild Love. It, uh, or, you know, the a, a cappella. It was just yeah. just amazing. We just those, those four voices just gelled so beautifully. So I like the way that they were so um, experimental at a time when they were really quite a pop band. I mean, they were. Yeah. You know, I mean, Morrison was a beautiful man. I mean, you can see why Have you they seen were the so movie? popular. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Yeah. That 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 I've been doing gravy in, in Paris. I have. Yeah, yeah? Uh, that's a story yeah. in itself. That is. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Jim I, Morrison's grave. I went to Bella Chase, and uh, it was actually closed for the day because there was a um, some dignitary was being buried. And oh, uh, I, had, I had a really long conversation with one of the guards who was turning me away, and he was basically saying to me in in, in, um, in, in French, and I was sort of following most of what he was saying. He was basically saying, "I'm really sorry, son. I can't let you in to see Jim Morrison's grave." And I said to him, "Why do you think I'm seeing Jim Morrison? Why do you not think I'm going to go and see Bumbo?" And he said, "Well, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is going to get you? What else are you going to say? I could be seeing Steve Bates. Yeah, true, <laughs> true. So yeah, so the doors and." 
uh, I know it's a massive goth cliche, but sisters are messy. Cool. Um, I love the way they define the sound, and I really like intelligent lyrics. Well mm. delivered, and I think uh, Eldritch. You can't fault Eldritch on that, can you? He's, he's amazing, and, and I love the way he's um, unap- unapologetically intelligent. Yes, um, I find that very intelligent. I would find that intelligent in pop music as well. It's just I, yeah. li- I like to not be spoken down to. I like to be taken as an equal yeah. on, on a journey musically. So those those are my three influences: Susan the Banshees, The Doors, and and The Sisters of Mercy. Cool. I, think, I suppose really it's hard for me to kind of narrow them down because obviously there's influences that inform Chaos Week. There's influences on me, which are different things. Yeah. I think really, if you could ask me what my influence are, we've already said about Play Dead and Killing Joke. That's the, the, the commonality that we have. But for me, I think the main influences early Hawkwind, Space Ritual. If it wasn't for the Space Ritual album, I would have never have picked up a guitar. All right. That album alone made me decide that I wanted to be, to play music and be in a band. Um, so I'm going to say, I'm going to put it down to albums because I think, you know, it's probably the easiest way. So Space Ritual, that made me, made me, because I thought, because you know, I listened to all this, this music, you know, and you're thinking, I'm never going to be able to play that. I don't, I don't know how to play guitar. I can't, I can't work that out. Yeah. When I, heard, when I heard Space Ritual, I thought, first off, I'm big into science fiction yeah. for various reasons. And when I heard the Space Ritual album, there's no album that sounds like it. Even, even Do Re Me, which is the album they did before that, doesn't re- it sort of sounds like Space Ritual, but it doesn't. And nothing they ever did after Space Ritual ever sounded like it. So it was that, that particular period, Space Ritual, the fact yeah. it was done live, the fact that they're unapologetically over the top of the space thing. And also I loved all the space sounds as I'd call them, you know, the, mm. right, the sort of rising arpeggiators. And I loved all that, that, that idea, and I loved that. And to this day, I still love it. And it still it still comes in Chaos Beats music now. Yeah. You know, there's a song, obviously, we, we, we mentioned Watch the Night Sky. But the first, one of the earliest songs we wrote is in a song called Beneath the Moon. The middle eight, basically, that is my tribute to space rock. Because yeah. I've got like sort of I've got like a uh, glissando guitar going off, you know, gong style stuff going off, all of that. But but we're within the post punk and gothic canon. So I suppose going back, space ritual, massive influence. Um, Black Sabbath's uh, Master of Reality. That was the first record uh, album I ever bought. Yeah. And that again turned me on to the idea of of lyrics could be about something else. Now, you've got to bear in mind that I grew up in a council estate where music that wasn't in the charts did not exist. Yeah. It did not exist. And if it did, it was weirdo music and was yeah. therefore completely invalid. So, and also, basically, charts music then and now, well, about now, but then, was always about the boy meets girl formula for a thousand different reasons. Nothing wrong with that, but that was all I knew. Yeah. When I heard st- songs about devils and, and Satan and other worlds, I was sold, mate. You know, that was it. I was sold. So, you know, um, Master of Reality, Space Ritual, and, you know, obviously uh, I agree with what Pierce says, there's similar influences to me. But another thing I'm going to throw in, which is, which is un- unusual, is an album, for me, one of the best albums ever made, for reasons I'm going to be clear about, is by a band called Spirit. Not everybody knows who Spirit are. Yeah. Spirit is a guy called, uh, well, it was form- fronted by a chap called Randy California, who's unfortunately died many, many years ago. And he's an album called Future Games. Now, Future Games, it was a one-off. He never did another album like, he, I say he, because he was the main force behind the band. And what it was, was an, a mixing of fairly conventional West Coast American music, yeah. you know, of the time, but with what we now call samples and loops and bits of radio conversations, bits of TV programs, which all mixed together. And what was really revolutionary, and this is 1977, was that the actual clips, audio clips, were part of the song. I know Pink Floyd had done similar things before yeah. that, and I love them for that. But Spirit pushed it one step further, and it was like almost like a, a psychedelic trip. But when I heard that, and because I'm obviously big into science fiction and big into horror, I heard that you could mix music and science fiction films and, and television programs and random bits of radio conversations. I thought, sold. Yeah. And to this day, they're yeah. probably my three 
if I'm really honest, I mean, I, there's thousands of other influences I can go on about. Yeah. But I'm talking about my primal influences. Because if it wasn't for Space Ritual, I would have never, I literally decided to pick up a guitar, which my dad had given me a year ago, and decided to start, because I thought, I think I could probably do this kind of thing. Mm. And the other thing is about playing guitar is that I did never wanted my guitar to sound like a guitar. Yeah. I wanted it to sound like a rocket engine from another planet and I wanted the guitar solo to sound like a radio signal from, yeah. from another from another dimension. And that, to this day, no matter what band I'm in, is how I judge how good my guitar work is. Does it sound like a rocket engine? Yeah. Does it sound rhythmic and, and, and otherworldly? And I think, that, you know, this is all to do the trans... I mean, the EP that we've, done, we've written yeah. uh, is called Transcendental Chaos. And it's like the idea of that you can, the music can take you out of yourself. Yeah. And I suppose that's something we all believe in differently. And I think with me is that I've always thought that, you know, when you hear a piece of music, it's not always literally what in, its intention may not necessarily be its effect. Yeah. You know, I mean, for me, I've got, we've always to do with associations, and I won't go on about this too much, because something I'm really interested in. Yeah. It's, 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 you know, it's called, by the way, if you're interested, it's called musicomatic analysis, where you start to go on about, about all this kind of stuff. But for me, it's like kind of, sometimes people write a song, and they'll have one intention, but it'll be, it'll be perceived as something else. Yeah. But even more, more, more profound than that, a riff, a beat, will put something in your mind, yeah. which maybe was intentional, maybe not. Mm. It's transcendental. It, it transcends. It causes you to transcend. Mm. And, you know, and for me... But is that nice when you write something, you record something, and somebody comes up to you and then says, my interpretation is this. And you go, well, actually, it's not what I intended, but... I've not thought of that at all. But I did, I've never seen that. That's, yeah, that's but sometimes brilliant. when you write music, you don't realise mm. that you're a cipher oh, for, your, yeah. for your own influences. Yeah. Yeah. This is what I said to you. Yeah. When people try and describe m your music, mm. because you're right, you're right in scrum, mm. you can't see it objectively. You can't so what you think you're, yeah. you're, you're saying, yeah. it, or not saying, sometimes you yeah. think you're being really subtle yeah. and obtuse about something, but you're actually not. You're being about as subtle as a battering ram. Yeah. About, and you think that, oh, yeah. you wouldn't have got that because yeah. it's too subtle. Yeah. Oh, no, I knew you were talking about <laughs> X, Y, and Z. Yeah. But I mean, so, so I think that sometimes you, you, your music can, can capture uh, a whole variety of your own personal emotions, yeah. but also it can also be rooted very much in your locale, your area. Oh, yeah. And you may, you may not re realise that, that you're doing that, yeah. but it, it does. I mean, David Thomas from, from Perubu was saying that music should be parochial. Mm. It should have an accent. And I'm, yeah. I'm not so so emphatic about that. Yeah. But I think if it has got an accent or it has got a locale, then that's okay. And I think yeah. with what we do, we're very much branded with the, the 90s goth underground sound, Ooh, which yeah. I love and yeah. I'm quite happy about. Me too. Yeah, so, yeah, sorry. Obtuse. <laughs> don't 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 be sorry whatsoever. Have you seen the documentary Sound City? No. Right, there's this one no. bit where Dave Grohl. I have seen you about yes. the studio. Yeah, yeah. 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 Where yeah. Dave yeah. Grohl is talking to Rupert Neve. Yeah, I yeah. Think, and I think I it's it. got the subtitles of "I don't understand what this guy's going on about." <laughs> like I understand music a lot, but oh, wow, I was like, struggling to keep up then. Yeah, <laughs> I so know how Dave Grohl felt yeah. like yeah. speaking to Rupert Neve, yeah. and that guy's a fucking legend. Yeah, wow. But isn't it interesting that a musician of his caliber, and yeah. status, should should be in that position? Yeah, do you sometimes with that. That's, but that's not a bad thing because sometimes you don't, you know, you don't realise what is the old phrase. You do not realise what you do. Yeah. You know, and sometimes yeah. it's me. I mean, yeah. people have often asked me about why I do music, what I want to get from it, and I can't answer any of those questions no. really. And no. say it's part of, you know, I mean, maybe it's rooted in my upbringing, maybe it's rooted in in what I intend to say mm. or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. And I think that obviously, as you said, some people will say I've always interpreted your song to mean that. And you think. I meant that all along. You know, you, yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. you think, yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. And it's like kind of, and for me, I just, you know, I, I, I'm obsessed by music. You know, I could say, as you know, I, yeah. I, I kind of, I can sit and, and, and so, yeah. analyse it to... What, to what, what else is there to be obsessed about? I, I personally don't think there is anything else that so is as meritable. It's so, it's so, I mean, so all-consuming, isn't it? I mean, what was uh, the interesting, I saw, I saw the first part of, um, what's his name, Stuart Copeland's thing about music, 
and I was expecting not to like it. And certain bits I didn't like, mm. but he made some extremely good points mm. about the value of music. And I thought, yeah. you know what? Yeah. That, that was bang on, mate. Yeah. And one of the things, he, he actually, um, uh, there's an academic wrote a book about, about music, and he said, music is nothing more than cheesecake. It's nothing more than periphery. And he, cheesecake was a term he used. Whoa. And loads of people said, and he said, that he said, you could take music out of mankind's evolution. You can't. Uh, no, it's just really interesting points. Uh, you could take it out of mankind's evolution. And we still, our society would still work the same. And uh, Stuart Copeland, of course, is completely against that view. Well, of course he is. Uh, but he, he gave He's a dream for a start, which is the most primordial. Yeah, but he, he came up with some brilliant points. I mean, and I was thinking, the points were so good, I'm probably yeah. going to use them in my research. Wow. And I was thinking, wow. you know what? One of the interesting things that they, they said about the anthropological reason for, um, uh, was it also our species, as Homo sapiens, to survive over other species is we had music and they didn't. Yeah. Yeah. And they've discovered that they had like bone flutes yeah. millions of years ago yeah. before they even had a written language. Yeah. And music was the, and do you know one of the things you, I always talk about the value of music and I say that it's, it's about the tribe. Language. Remember I've always said that. Yeah. And what uh, this academic is now saying is that that was the reason why Homo sapiens succeeded because they could band together yeah through their, the, the connections they have in music. Yeah. And obviously, uh, Sir Combs made a, a brilliant point about how music connects people yeah. and how everybody's got innate musicality yeah. and how that is actually more primal than language. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? Brilliant. Yeah. Best thing I've seen yeah. for a very, very long time. I can't... But strangely, you cut your hands. That, we're actually proving it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So That's you, you cut your hands here. Yeah. You're clapping your hands. You clap your hands in Poland. Same. same yeah, way. of course. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You, in Africa. you see, yeah, I, totally, totally great. I used to work with a bassist and really, really intelligent guy and really, wow, like about music, we could talk for hours. But I can't, I wrote down the quote. Now I've changed my um, notebook and I thought I'd put it in this notebook, but I haven't. So I'm going to have to try and paraphrase it or That's right. try to remember it. But he said to me, if you take away voice, from music, you can still dance. If you take True. music away from voice, you've got yourself a lecture. Not necessarily because you can have, you can have a cappella. Well, yeah, I you, can, you can. So, I mean, one of the things that Stuart Copeland did last night, the other guy that wrote the song "Don't Worry, Be Happy." Yeah, he's now an academic and he's writing a lot about. Wow. It. it was brilliant what he did. Yeah, really brilliant. Yeah. He was proving, and he, uh, you know, something I can't do because I can't really sing properly. Ferrin. And he was showing that everybody has got an innate musicality, and he used a human voice to mm. prove it. Yeah, and he proved it. He also proved that we all know scales, whether we know the names or not, and he proved it, yeah. literally with these little kids. He got them all, not, he did them Don't Worry Be Happy, but he did other yeah. things as yeah. well. Yeah. And it's like kind of the human voice, I think, that is actually the first instrument yeah. before mm. anything else. So yeah. I think that the human voice is actually, I don't agree with that quote, I think the, the human, mm. human voice is, is the most, it gives, it gives narrative to songs, but it also can be an instrument in its own right. And this has been proven many, many, many times. A cappella singing, Mongolian throat singing, Have you et cetera, et cetera. What's come out of uh, NAM, the American music no, conference no, no, that's no, just no. happened? No, not at all. A company has decided to make a USB microphone for you to sing into. And what happens is it comes out as MIDI. Yeah. So if you've oh, got yeah. an idea inside yeah. your head, you can see it. I've got, or you that's, could, uh, that's, or yeah, that's been on the cards for a while. Where they really are excelling is you train it to learn your beatboxing drum kit and yeah. it comes out as MIDI. It's very good. And I'm like, wow. Yeah, but that's kind of, that's, yeah, that's been that's on the cards for a while. That's been that's on the cards for a little while. That's really yeah. good then, that is. That's, that's been on the cards right. for a while. I don't, I'm going to have to try and move on because no I, I could sit here all day <laughs> talking. No problem, but, no problem. Uh, unfortunately, we, we, we talk for England. <laughs> yeah. But and Ireland, Scotland you, and Wales as well. What are you excited about in the upcoming six months? Ooh, Piers, over to you. <laughs> so, um, on the cards, so on the 15th of March, we're playing a gig with one of my favourite bands. Still uh, Patient. Jim Band Still Patient. Great uh, band. That's at the Chameleon in, yeah. uh, in Nottingham. Super venue. I am beyond excited. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah. Um, Great band. Also, we are at a position where we're going to do the second pressing of our EP. The, the first, um, first set of pressings are sold out. Yeah. Uh, we've got new work in the 
um, in the offing. So it, it feels, for the band, it feels like a good time. We're sort of seeing the back of some yeah. work, which is still sort of, still current. Yeah. As well as we've got new stuff on the on the horizon as well. So we've got a couple of new singles coming out of there. We've got we've got stuff in the can. We've got we've got a couple of a couple of songs we need to, we've we've got the music done. Piers just needs to do his vocals. At yeah, one, and then record backing vocals as well. Yeah. So I think you know just to continue. It'd be interesting to see. Um, you know the, the second EP mini album thing that we're yeah. going to do. So that's that's the most exciting thing I think yeah. just to continue with it, that. Really. It's starting to shake, take shape as well, isn't it? We've so, got loads of songs. We've got about sixteen yeah. tracks. Yeah. Really. We just um, we played last week at the Chameleon again, um, which we bootlegged. So our first headli- headline headline slot as well. Uh, so we may be doing something with that. that what do you think like to the remasters? Good. Like Have you heard the originals? Yeah. So you know the difference. Much better. Yeah. <laughs> Much better. Okay. So we might be doing something with that as a sort of fan-only download or something. So, well, I mean, yeah. Justin was saying about when we play Whitby, because we're playing uh, the Marquis Masquerade in Whitby. Yeah. Uh, maybe we'd give them away, but I was thinking maybe if somebody buys Transcendental Chaos, get one. they get one free. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a marketing yeah. tool, really. Yeah. So we'll, yeah, we'll think about that. But but yeah, and the bootlegging just for just in case bootleg. anyone's wondering what it is, <laughs> they've recorded their live set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's, it's yeah. A basically so, you know so boot, bootlegging is how I, I I guess sort of back in the day it's something we used to do. We'd all go to Camden Market, we'd all root through. Yeah, the, there's no wrong with that. Through the, through the cassettes of like our favourite bands at gigs. We'd bloody hell, look at that! Bloody hell, look at that! Look at this ghost you CD. Yeah, I know. It's, it's funny when you actually I've actually done that. I've actually gone through bootleg things in Camden. And thought, hey, this is my band. Oh, right. <laughs> this is my band. <laughs> Oh, oh, Christ, it's my <laughs> oh, it's all right, I don't care. Put it back in, carry it on. This is my band! But it was also a really good way to hear. So it always used to be the case. So Ghost, Ghost is sort yeah. of the case in point. So a couple of albums. The other songs were never recorded. Exactly. Live versions so were never recorded. Often the only way to hear those other songs was was, was a bootleg. Okay, so yeah. it was, you know. If you if you like tape piss, it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> tape You see that video of, of when we played in, in Italy? Yes. When, when I did that version of I Walk With A Zombie. Which, yeah. Oh, <laughs> a video just yeah. sort of emerged from like 30 oh, years ago. Yeah. You know, <laughs> when we played, it's good. Actually, it's good, to be fair. Yeah, it's good. Cool. It's really good. It but it's obviously, you know, you know, it's, it's got a lovely hissy life oh, thing. Oh, it really takes you back, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, yeah. So don't bring it right up. So he's not saying guitar. That's a Charvel. No Yeah, way. yeah, absolutely, yeah. Love so he's in the same one. Anyway, sorry, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so yeah, we, we're looking forward. I think just continue. I think that just continue, yeah. I think that really, I mean, um, we all, we all know that we're not going to become superstars because, quite frankly, those days are over for everybody. Yeah, because because the, the the way that the music industry. Uh, well, not the music industry, but the way sociologically uh, our societies work now is that it is impossible for any band to climb up past a certain point because of, of the file sharing and the way that people uh, share and interact with music yeah. isn't the same. When we grew up, you actually bought a CD or a record, you were making an investment into that band and into the culture. Yeah. Nowadays, um, particularly young kids, stuff's for free everywhere. And I'm not saying it's wrong, it's just how our society has developed. Yeah. But what that's yeah. done is it's 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 you will get no more Metallicas, no more Led Zeppelins because the mechanism does not exist for bands to get to that degree through sales because it just you just won't have that concentration. So what is happening is I I, I, I predict and it's a bit too Coleman saying in a, in a different way is that people will still continue to produce music because it's an innate, innate thing yeah. and people will still support it but it'll be on a lot smaller scale yeah. so you won't get like your massive mega bands anymore they'll all go as they, as they all die off there won't be anybody to replace them so what, what'll happen is I'm not quite sure how this is ultimately going to end up I mean, at the moment you've got a lot of kids looking back to the 80s you know mining the 80s for, for yeah. content but I think ultimately you know People are going to support in you know small scale, small scale support basically. So we know that we're never going to play to massive crowds. We we'll yeah. play to nice, respectable crowds, and we're very, very pleased to do that, and very, very happy. We've got no ambition to web- play Wembley Arena anytime soon. We know that won't happen because there's no mechanism for bands like us and of our not our generation so much because you know we're older, yeah. we're older than we look. Um, but as in like cause we're a young band in terms of time, ta- in terms of time. Yeah. We know we will never build up an audience past a certain point because we will not have the we will not have the um, access to to what those bands had. Yeah. 
mm. economic access is yeah. what it comes down to. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like kind of an, un I'm not saying it's right or wrong, I'm just saying it is. But by the same yeah. token, it means that we, we do retain control of what we've got. Well, that's the point, and that's, that's, a, that's, that's the point. Positive thing. I mean, obviously we did the interview with that magazine at Eighth Day, mm. and they were called us fiercely independent. Yeah. And I suppose that, because we all come from, all three of us, from a very much independent DIY, yeah. punk attitude, yeah. really. Absolutely, yeah. You know, I mean, Spotty Face Crest fans gone goth. Absolutely. You know, I mean, and so we come from that, that DIY ethic. So the fact that, I mean, I, I, and I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a little secret now. I mean, I've been in loads of different bands. Some did relatively well. We played to big audiences. Some, some we didn't. It doesn't matter. If one person likes the music I've done, just one, I'm happy. Good. That sounds crazy, mm -hmm. but people don't understand this. They say, why don't you want to be on stage and adored? I've, ne I've never done it for that reason. I just like the fact that when we, when we played the gig the other week, when people were singing along yeah. to, to Beneath the Moon. Yeah, yeah. That's the first time it's happened. Yeah. It's only yeah. your fourth gig. Yeah. First time that's happened. That to me is, yeah. is, 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 is amazing. Yeah. And it'll never get old for me. Not ever. And to me that, I'm excited about people liking the music that we do, genuinely. Yeah. You know? That is exciting for as me. A, as a fan of music, I would rather yeah. somebody comes up to me after we've played a gig and says, oh, that was brilliant. Because that's what I would say. Yeah. That means more than me. See, that's the same kind of thing. I mean, that, so we see what we're looking forward to yeah. is do more of the same of that. Good. I mean, so it's like kind of, you know, we will have, we've, we, we will fall into an underground niche. I don't know how big we'll get. I, I've no idea. Yeah. Uh, but I don't, but, the, it, but the, basically there is a glass ceiling, which is purely and simply to do with economics. And that's mm. that. And also the fact that we're older. I mean, you know, we do live in an ageist world. And obviously the fact that, you know, I'm getting old. <laughs> I'm older than everybody else. <laughs> Long in the two. It's a got, it's a Who's the old man in your band? <laughs> But seriously, you have to say it loud, can't hear you. Yeah. What? <laughs> but seriously, Do you know what? I'm going to have to say this right now. For a singer, you're very quiet. <laughs> he's, he's totally oh. overruled you. I hope you're a lot louder on stage. On stage, I am. Yeah. Or do you oh, use a bigger it. amplifier? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, known, I'm known for it, really. I'm known for it. But it's, uh, you know, I mean... That... I, I could have phoned my bit No. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew Trevor would talk. I try, I try not to. Right, can I move you on to the last question? Okay. Yeah. In your opinion, if you believe it, what makes the Knox alternative scene great? I would say because of its... Location in Nottingham, to be honest. Well, I, think, I, think, wrong. I think we have so many different, diverse, alternative strands of, of music and, and culture here. Yeah. So we don't just have like goth and metal. We've got the all, dance thing, the yeah. hip hop thing. Yeah. All the, you know, all the all the sort of the grime stuff and the trap stuff, which is specifically Nottingham as well. I mean, it's all around here. Stuff is it's all around here. And because. Not even such a melting pot, as I said earlier, of, of, of peoples and cultures. I think we've got such a diverse well to draw from. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, and Nottingham is a welcoming place. There's there's venues that will put on, you know, on a Monday night, they'll put a dance act. On a Tuesday night, it'll be a metal act. On a Wednesday night, a, a jazz band. Do you know mm, what I mean? Yeah. We're, we're so diverse here. I, th I think in Nottingham you could go out every night of the week and hear a different sort of band. I think so. And then the following week go out every night and hear different bands again. I think so. I think there's such a wealth of talent here. Um, and, and also what I really like is the way that we, we do a lot of sort of cross-cultural stuff. So when we were in Arcane Winter, we, we worked with a rapper. Yeah. Um, it was amazing. The, the audience he bought to see him who stayed to see us yeah. was amazing. Subsequently, I went to a couple of his shows. Obviously, I, you know, I was anyone with a little leather jacket and long black hair. Yeah. But you know what? I think there's a lot of cross-cultural stuff and a lot of, I don't know, just, I, I think we've, we're very interested to try different stuff in Nottingham. I think mm. if, you, if you say, I'm only a metal fan, I'm only a goth, do you know what? You're probably not, are you? You probably go and see other stuff, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. let's, let's not be purist. Let's be open-minded, and I think that's a, a lot of the stuff that Nottingham is anyway, is reflected in the in, in the alternative scene. Yeah. Um, so if you, I, I was reading the other day about some of the pop acts that come from Nottingham, um, NWS and stuff like that. Mm. It's like, and the, the woman who was the Eurovision Didn't entry. Know about that one. It's like, but yeah, Whitecliff was from Nottingham. Whitecliff, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
exactly. Yeah, okay. So I only found out the other week that Jack Butler was from Nottingham. Yeah. <laughs> he's one of my ex-students. He's one of your ex-students. Yeah, he was in my class, yeah. I was, oh, I was, well. I was his lecturer. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know him very well. I mean, he was only with me for about six weeks. He was quite quiet. But yeah, I taught Jack Butler. Well, yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. You know, I remember having, the conversation I remember having with him. This is probably had several, but is that I was trying to teach him music sequencing. Yeah, because I was, you know, I did music. I did, but I was towards the end. I was head of music performance, but I did a lot of technology as well. And uh, you know, I was explaining to him about how useful that would be, no matter what kind of music you liked. Yeah, we both bonded over our love of Neil Young because mm. I really like Neil Young. Yeah, so you know, so that's but about the conversation. Jay Bugs' music is is quite a sort of fifties yeah influence stuff. I'm just, for for a young man, he must be what twenty five now. Yeah, yeah. Is, I, is, I, I know nothing now? about that guy. Yeah. I just know I, that he's oh, a right. pop star. So I, I remember this. Well, I, well I, a lot of my students, you know, Gareth and all that, they they well, grew up with him. A lot of my students yeah. grew up with him, knew him yeah. really, really well. Yeah. Oh, he's very well entrenched. Not just Nottingham, but specifically Clifton. Clifton. From yeah. Clifton, yeah. specifically Clifton, Clifton oh. Attitude. He's very much, a lot of his early songs are about Clifton, not Nottingham. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to say on that question? What about Jay Bug? No, I mean <laughs> on uh, Jay Bug, sorry. what makes the alternative scene great All right. before we bring this to an end. I think you've said it really. I think that I don't think there's anything more to add really. Cool. Um, I, I'm just racking my brains. I can't think of anything. Yeah. I'd say also with... One thing that we do benefit from here is that we've got such a diverse set of um, venues as well. Yes. So obviously there's Rock City. Yeah. Which is both an alternative and a, and a, and a pop venue. Yeah. Um, the arena. So obviously sometimes some you get some alternative acts there. Obviously they're massive. Yeah. I think. And you know, ice skating. And ice skating. <laughs> <laughs> But then you, you get you, you get your venues like so here so the the, the sal is a venue and the, the chameleon yeah new venues have opened up like the um, the old cold store and stuff like that yeah. so Billy Bootleg is so although and the wine vaults out that yeah, way yeah exactly um, so so although we are they, Eastwood. So Eastwood Eastwood yeah, yeah. yeah. so I know obviously pl- venues will close from time to time and that's true across across the, the country mm. isn't it and even Foreman's the little pub. Still, yeah. This is amazing. And they put on gigs there. I know. <laughs> Steve Ignorant played there, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Tiny place, yeah. So you, you, you walk in, 20 of you walk into Foreman's and it's more than full. Yeah. Where does mm. the man go? <laughs> I, yeah. I'm still wrapping that one myself. <laughs> oh. An amazing place. I always remember when, when uh, Professor Elemental played at Alicaf. That's even smaller. Yeah, oh, Alicaf. It's not even as big as this room. Gigs in the Alicaf were amazing. It was like, yeah. Gigs on my landing. Yeah, <laughs> amazing, amazing. I don't know if you ever went there. It, it was quite. I did. I've been to the business room. Yeah, yeah. Times. Was yeah. Business room. Yeah, mm. I haven't been for many years, but yeah. Well, sadly, it's closed. So I heard they did close. Yeah. Yeah. Shame, yeah. shame, because that was a great little place. So, any other, any other questions? No, that's it. Oh, well, I suppose you, we should get a pr- plug in for the yeah. EP. So, um, yeah. yeah. So our, our our current EP is the Transcendental Chaos EP, available from Bandcamp um, as a download or as a physical. Copy. Limited edition physical CD. Physical copy, should you want one? Uh, we have various singles on um, YouTube. We have the videos yeah, on YouTube and on Facebook. Facebook, yeah. And live videos as well. Yeah, so I'd, I'd also like to thank uh, our good friend Stuart for Absolutely. sharing all our videos. Um, he's, he's the man. Not just videos, but he's also done a lot of promotional photographs. Yeah. Yeah. He's took yeah. those. Oh, cool. Uh, you know, he's, he's, but he, you know, he's always been with us. He's even he's even in funeral in Berlin. He is, yeah. Yeah, he's he even is, in yeah. funeral in Berlin. Yeah, if you, you, you'll spot him. Yeah, he wasn't happy, but he's no. But I, I wanted both. I wanted Sarah. She got, we got Sarah in as well, didn't you we? You can see the back of it. We wanted these are people that support us, and yeah. we wanted them to be in the video as well. Because when I was in um, in every new dead ghost uh, back in the sort of eighties and nineties, is we had this thing that even though we were the band, there was a greater family outside that was as part yeah. of the, the ba- as part of the thing, yeah. as much as the band was the core, yeah. as in the music that was created, but the tribalness that came out, and we used to call it the ND, we used to call it ENDG family. So I, I still very much believe in that, the idea that you've got music at the core, and then there's people that, that basically are connected, and yeah. they do things mm-hmm. for you. Absolutely. So it's yeah. just a thousand, thousand, thousand favours. Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, Absolutely. you know. Yeah. You know I, I don't think he realises how much he's done for us yeah I mean we're working on we're going to start working on a new promotional video with him soon um, we've, we've got one in the bag for uh, watch them I've finished it by the way good it, that's done but the next one we we have to discuss yes yes Return Revenge Return that's, Revenge uh, yeah killer baseline 
Well, I was started at the beginning of this chat, and I tell you what, I'm even more enthusiastical about going to listen to your music oh, this gosh, afternoon. Thank you very much. Cheers. I've had an amazing thank you. chat. Thank when you. This, yes, thank you. Cheers. When this comes out on the podcast, definitely link you on Facebook. If you could, because yeah. we'll promote it for you yeah, as well. Yeah. That's absolutely brilliant. Well, it benefits both. I mean, obviously, we've got the Nybury Radio as and well. all the links will yeah. go in the show notes. So Piers has sent you everything. Yeah. yeah. So you actually yeah. haven't heard any of our music yet at all? No. Wow. So, what's so now I'm, the best way. So, I'll, 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 so I'll, now I'm really yeah. excited because yeah. there's only two types of music, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. The thing is, just, uh, we, the way we do our music is that uh, there's, there's um, obviously, uh, backtrack's electronic, but it doesn't sound electronic. The drums yeah. sound huge, don't they? They do. Oh, cool. Yeah. sound huge. And I've spent a long time trying to get that sound right. Uh, but we've got, we, we play songs either in E standard or D standard. Yeah. And so whatever tune we're playing changes the nature of the song, yeah. the, the, the band. Yeah. When we play yeah. live, what we do, <laughs> the first half of the set is an E. Yeah. Second half, after a, a after synthesizer <laughs> thing, after the costume change, after the costume change, it goes into D, and there's a definite sort of uh, energy shift. Yeah, yeah, in a good way. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's like kind of, it's like two different. I always think it sounds like two different bands. Yeah, but it's not. But I, it I always does think, feel I always like think a, when we play live, it's like listening to two sides of a vinyl EP. Yes, that's a good one. I so like that. You, so you listen to the first side, you think, oh. Listen to those melodies. Listen to those, you know. Melodies? What? We have melodies. <laughs> we're all we're about rhythm. <laughs> Listen to those well-crafted lyrics. <laughs> the sequences. <laughs> that comes to an end. You turn over. Let's rock the fuck out. Yeah. Because oh. I was a bit concerned when we started using D standard tuning. Yeah. Because you know how people are about about rock yeah. and the gothic scene. Yeah. And I said no. Yeah. I like this sound. Yeah. And you know yeah. what? I mean, yeah. you know, you know, when we put it together, when we put the D standard songs together. Yeah. I mean, we did the similar thing with Arcane Winter. Yeah, true. Uh, but yeah. some people got put people yeah. heard heard the sound of the D standard guitar yeah. and instantly thought Slipknot. Not yeah. that they in D standard, but you know what I mean. That, I'm sure they're about B. I think. I think. Yeah. I think yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Is that <laughs> is that people start thinking of that, and I think yeah. no, because. I think, I mean, obviously Killing Joke again is our touchstone. Yeah. But it's like kind of, you know, I think we've pulled it off now. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I was glad we did we did uh, Write a Name in Diamonds, which yeah. is kind of a love song. It's, yeah. it's, it's in D-standard. It's, it's a pop song. And it's got it's got those chunky D riffs in, but it stands back. The yeah. guitar stands back, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, that, you know. It's a proper love song. You know, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's like I was a bit, I was a bit um, nervous. And when we played somewhere, somebody was saying, you've got metal influences and if the metal influences are there on me the subconscious because I left the metal scene many many years ago as we were saying earlier it's, what, it's how people interpret it isn't it and you, I can't say to you Jeff Rowe, we're only this and if you hear something you else, can't say that because everyone has their own because reference you, point because that's not how music this is works. why more and more bands are turning around and saying we're genreless we just play music but there's also a problem with that as well because I mean obviously as an academic people like to know yeah people one of the things I, 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 I'm sympathetic to both sides completely yeah but the thing is where people say oh, you know I'm just me what's me then exactly well, we're all we're all some total of our influences yep. and we may not always realise it which is why we started the interview I said it's not for us to say really we think we're like this yeah but it's like we may not be that depending on I mean this one girl she liked us but she said oh you've got lots of metal influences in your music I don't think there's any metal influences on music it's, I it's can't see it I, I, I think genre is a strange thing it's yeah genre is, is your door into powerful the guitars is metal so, well Punk's got powerful punk, guitars. Exactly. And Killing I, Joker got I, powerful I think guitars. Genre is your is your door into a room, isn't it? You yes. Open the door and you walk into the room. Now, whether you like the furniture or not, yes, is your personal yeah. taste, isn't it? Yeah. But you chose to walk into that to that genre exactly. room. Exactly. Explore the room. If you don't like it, try somewhere else. Yep. It's absolutely fine. Yeah. But my interpretation of something is going to be different to Trev's. Yep. Jeffro to yours. Yeah. Yep. To anybody's. We, we, we are the sum total of everything we've ever Absolutely, heard, yeah. good or bad. Yes, I agree. Cool. Yeah. Right, I'm going to say, let's bring this to a close. Thank you very much, Trevor. Thank you very much, Piers. No worries. I'm going to go use the Enjoyed it very <laughs> much. <laughs> Enjoyed it very much. Yeah, cool. that's brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you, Knots Rockers, for listening to Knots Rockcast over YouTube. As I've said before, please go check us out on a podcast player and you will get more media content, news and reviews. So don't forget, hit that subscribe button, ding that bell to be notified when we release more videos on this channel. Keep it Knots.
Keep It Rocks. Knott's Rockcast is an association with Regular Riot. Welcome to Knott's Rockcast, the Knott's Alternative Scene Podcast. Here is your host, Jethro D, bringing you everything, knots and rocks. 